it's a mean business. How, how do you deal with that? Well, how, the meanness? Yes. I, I, I completely P-U-S-S-Y'd out and I stopped acting. And I, I didn't do this. That I, was a I big- feel so bad, but it's I-E-D. <laughs> it's not Y-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Every Plate. What a great meal kit company this is. The meals come right to my door. The meals are tasty. The meals are healthy and they are fast. And right now, guys, you can get your first box for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and using my code NASH149. That's NASH149 at everyplate.com. Okay, back to the episode. Guys, guys, we're not talking about that. Guys, what's up? <laughs> Welcome to the easiest podcast I will do so far. There's three cameras. Yeah, well, we we're, we're trying to step it up. We have we have a good production here. This is the All Good Things podcast. My guest today is Julie Bowen, <laughs> who is shot out of a cannon. This I am morning. shot out of a cannon. I can't I'm very wait anxious. to talk to you. She's already said ten good things. We didn't have the cameras on. No, now, now I'm done. Uh, and like that little, the like the little frog on the old Warner Brothers cartoons. We've gone. Hello, my baby. Hello, my. Da-. And then it, anybody comes over and looks at it, ribbit. Doesn't do anything. What? What happened? Can you talk about Conan? Or you don't want to talk about. No, it? I'm not going to talk. I love Conan. Okay, great. I, I do love Conan. I want to talk about you. Okay, talk about me. So you used to be my neighbor. Yep. And I used to see you go running with Matt Selman. Which was so weird. Okay. And then- Okay, so one time I'm running. Matt Selman is a writer on The Simpsons. Great guy. Great, one of my earliest guy. friends in LA. We ran by Julie Bowen once. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that was Julie Bowen. And then someone was like, oh yeah, I, no, I know her. Like, yeah. she, And she lives like seven da- houses down from you. Yes. And you were like Mr. Super Fit. Then I used to then see Then I got you, fat. Well, I, that's what I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> then I got fat. I go like this. Like, I don't know. You were like the neighbor dude, and then you got di- you got divorced. Yep. And we, there's another neighbor who used to kind of- Doug. T- Doug, who would tell me what was going on. Doug, yeah. And then I would see you at the, we used to both go to this, like, uh, like a little rinky-dink. It's not, I don't want to say a country club, because it's not. It's like a tennis club, but yeah. the rinky-dink gym there. It's rinky-dink that they haven't Super figured- Super rinky-dink. They haven't figured it out. I, I love it. I like it low-key. I do and too. I used to be like, is that- the dude from down the street, he looks really either emaciated. Like, there was a point where I was like, oh no. And like, he might- You stay fit, don't give me shit. No, but this was, you were like normal, and then you were like emaciated, and then you were l- less emaciated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were fat. I'm not gonna say that, I'm not, I'm not into shame. I'll say it, I mean, I went from, probably when you saw me, I was 175, uh-huh. and then I went to like 220. That's not that bad. That's 45 pounds, Julie. You were unrecognizable. I will say that because I wasn't sure. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hi. And I was like, am I waving at the wrong guy? And then your hair is constantly doing crazy shit. I know. It says its the, own thing. It's, it's it was, long. It's up. And then it's big. It's long. It's it's, it's like it's blonde. It's sort of gray. I mean, it's, it, this, it, like, it might be a sign that I'm crazy is that I need to change my look all the time. That's a sign of like. Did you, are you rocking like a conservative dad look for me today? Cause you're like, we both this have is, kids. This is my new look. Um, we're trying something new. We got four shirts for free from Tipsy Elves. Okay, Tipsy Elves. Oh, Do you know what that is? Uh, I've heard of that. They make pajamas too, right? They started they do. doing like Christmas sweaters and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we thought, I thought, oh, this is like a, th- th- it's bright. Like we like, you know, what for videos, bright? bright stuff right. looks and good. And match your eyes. Yeah. But you got like, the, the hair is like short and tight. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, you know, the short hair helps you look, look a little bit younger. Is that what they say? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, long hair doesn't help. No. Well, I, I mean, actually, we're about the same no, age. I'm like, oh, no, I'm older than you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But I want to know. But not by a lot. I want to know why you, what was with the wild weight fluctuations? Because I assumed it was hard drugs. Was I wrong? I'm serious. Doug would never confirm or deny. Neighbor Doug was- Did you, Would you ask Doug? Would you be like, is he on drugs? Doug, you gotta know that Doug, our neighbor Doug is like, would walk around. He has, I love this guy. He's hilariously funny, yeah, yeah, full dad is. bod, yes. shirtless, yes. and hiking all day long. Yeah, He's like the mayor of that whole area. You just see him all day long. No shirt, no shame, man tan everywhere, and <laughs> a dad titties. bod. And you just, you can't not see him. Yep. So you, at a certain point, you're like, what's going on in the hood? Why does Jason look like hell? Like, or why does Jason, <laughs> like, 
And he's like, uh, well, how do I look now? Okay. Good point. I, 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 like, just so like clean cut and together. I don't, yeah. but I don't really know your story other than you were my neighbor. I, I mean, I, I probably have just, I have a lot of issues with food. I just have so many issues with food. I'm not into drugs. I'm into food. <laughs> that was not drugs. No. Wow. No, it was not drugs. I, I, I literally just like, my mother raised me like she would just feed me all the time. I didn't understand like- Food that, was love. Like a, yeah, like a box of rice peel off is too much. Yeah. Like I, I th or they, she would be like, they would be like, oh, you can have a hamburger. That's really good for you. Like don't eat the Cocoa Puffs. I'd be like, okay, I won't eat the Cocoa Puffs. Right. But then I'd eat like three hamburgers. And, and do you have like still like an endless need to feed the hole within you with food? Yeah. So, and you can't be in love. You can't have a real relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am in a relationship now. And, what? And that's... <laughs> Wait, for real? Yeah. Guys, today's podcast is brought to you by our friends at SeatGeek. Yes, SeatGeek, the best ticketing app out there for concerts, for sporting events, for live comedy shows, for anything live. Go to SeatGeek, download the app right now, and you're going to get $20 off your first order with my code, Jason. Guys, fall is upon us. That means football. That means basketball. That means hockey. What better way to spend your time than go out and see some of these sporting events live in your city? And that's what SeatGeek, they'll bring the tickets right to you, right on the app. You can buy them day of. You can get a great deal on it. One of my favorite memories from SeatGeek is going to see the Laker game with Vardon and my kids. And it was so much fun. So do that for yourself. Download the SeatGeek app right now. Go check it out. Guys, SeatGeek's been with me for a long time. They've been advertising on this podcast. They've returned. And that's uh, thanks to you guys for going and downloading the app and using it and going out and seeing live events. And of course, you're getting $20 off your first order. So thank you to you guys that already downloaded the app. And thank you to those that are thinking about going there. Go to the link in the description right now and check out SeatGeek, SeatGeek.com backslash Jason Nash. I was doing like, I was trying to do acting and I was trying to yeah. do stand up and all these things. And I made a couple of movies like, and they didn't work. It was bad. And then I was doing stand up at the improv on Melrose one night in the little mm -hmm. room. And mm -hmm. uh, David came in. He was just in, happened to be in the audience. Then after I got on off stage, he was like, Do you want to come do YouTube? I think I told you the story at the club maybe once. Maybe yeah, I. Because I was very confused why my children suddenly knew who you were. Yeah, they're walking up? by you a thousand times one day. They're like, oh my God, mom, it's the guy from the. <laughs> Why don't they come say hi? Boob Squad. Uh, what was the it? Boob the Squad. Vlog, the vlog. The vlog. Vlognado. I don't know. Vlognado. Vlognado. Call, Call it that. Vl Vlognado. I don't. I don't know. But why would you know? Like, I wouldn't know either. Like, no. I get it, and and I wouldn't expect you to know. And and I didn't believe them, and I was like, no, that's the guy that used to live down the street. That's probably yeah. why you recognize him. That that's every. That's my existence. Is I will go into a mall, kids say hi, and then a mom comes up and goes. I, sorry, I I'm so know sorry. why are you talking to my kids? And, <laughs> and, that, and please take five steps back. Yeah. <laughs> if you could just not be so close to my children, that would be great. Because why did kids, like a kid's like, no mom. And I was like, and so I was like, wait, David Dubrow, he's the young David guy Dubrick. and he does these, why is he hanging out with Jason? Right, I never figured it out either. But he just liked you. He, we got, he, you know, I got off stage. He's like, can you come do, that one I had, maybe I did 10 bits and one bit. He was like, come do that one bit tomorrow. And I said, okay, yeah, sure. It, um, and then I went and did it. It was it went really good. And then I was like, I never thought I'd hear from him again. Right. And then I've seen him every day for five years since. Did you know who he was? I did know who he was. Oh, and, okay. and I knew I knew what he did. He made vlogs. And he, he was, he was, he <laughs> was, no, no, I, I think sorry. this is a good, I, I, the audience will love this. They'll love it. I don't know what that is. Because a lot of people, <laughs> A lot of people are you. A lot of people are coming to this podcast now, like um, that that know Nikki Glazer, but they don't know right. me. Right. So it's really good. So okay. that's what this podcast is. It's supposed okay. to be like, oh, I'm going to take like all the people I met in my old life, right, and my new life, uh -huh. and put them all together because I feel like that's the way media is going. It would be interesting to have like me, Nikki Glazer, and the. And the squad. And the Vlognados. And the Vlognados. And the Vlognados squad here, like, just mixing it up. Not everybody is massively talented <laughs> and hit it on the world's biggest sitcom <laughs> and is sitting on uh, royalty checks. I mean, uh, I mean those, those checks got to be, the, the SAG checks have to be amazing. There's nothing wrong with, with royalty checks. And when you realize that nothing else, I mean, like, 
it, it, it's the thing that just Abbott Elementary is the only network show that like won at the Emmys and stuff, and it'll probably never even be syndicated. Those it, they're wildly talented because that's just gone away. Because streamers own everything. That's what I heard. I heard that the, the kids that are on the, the really hot show on HBO with Zendaya. Yeah, Euphoria. Euphoria. They, I thought that was like your show. That's not the, the Vlognados don't watch Euphoria. Um, they might. I mean, I don't. Oh. I'm still I'm still Doug. I mean, I'm, I get along better with Doug than I do with the okay. Vlognados. All right. Do you know okay. what I mean? Like, that's who I am. For me, you know, when it, when it happened to me, it was the kind of thing where it was like uh, survival. Yeah. It really was. It was really survival. It was like, okay, I can go and do this mm-hmm. or I can go back to Lionsgate and pitch a movie or mm-hmm. try. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it became like, oh no, I really liked it. And then whatever the neighborhood thought. Um, <laughs> well, we thought I th- you were on hard drugs. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was fine. Just me. I, I was, didn't know that. I didn't okay. know it was hard drugs. I think they assumed that I, they thought other worse stuff. And I just said, oh, fuck it. Like, I don't care, you know, like, and, and it, it became, it became about Wyatt and Charlie. It's, it's honest to God, Julie. Like, I don't have an ego about it. I don't need to be praised. If you gave me $10 million right now, I'd go away. And I, <laughs> I'd go I, away. I would literally pull the plug on After the camera. After tax, would you pay your agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to pay the agent. Yeah, I have yeah. to pay the agent and the taxes. <laughs> So uh, then we really need like 20. So <laughs> as you get in California, in California to clear, yeah. to clear 10, you need 20. What, what do those residual checks look like? Are, do you, are, do you, you must have so many shows. You, do you get them? Cause I get them from Drake and Josh. I had one line on Drake and Josh. Oh yeah. And I still get them for $30, $60. Oh, I've gotten like happy Gilmore checks for like 25 cents. <laughs> and that's pretty fantastic. Um, do you cash them or what do you throw them out? No, I mean, I, yeah, every, you, 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 first of all, and I won't go, you and I are both California divorced. Yeah. That's its own financial situation and you like, you, yeah. you roll with it. And How so? No, I'm, I can't go into the details because I have a lot of respect for my ex and we chill and we have really great kids together. Good. But, me too. Um, I, I, I did not go off and like, buy another house when, when Modern Family was done. A lot of my castmates were like, you know, maybe I'll buy an island. And I was like, huh, <laughs> I am not going to be doing that. Um, you keep it, f- you're pretty frugal. I'm fair, I'm pretty frugal. You showed up in a $40,000 car. So that, that, that would say something. It's leased. <laughs> oh, wait, is that cheap or expensive? I'm I think that's pretty cheap for a Oh, okay. Oh, I think it's pretty I'm humble. Like, oh, my God. I'm I trying to like, tell people that oh, okay. she's, like, pretty humble, humble like, person. Oh, no, for, don't, is that how expensive the car is? I'll be personally honest. I, before, I, I, had a, I never had business managers or accountants or anything, and I literally took all my money and kept it in cash in a checking account. I would have stuffed my mattress. I'm like so afraid really? of every job being my last. Mm-hmm. And I'm so afraid that I'm never going to work again. Julie, come on. I am, no, I'm not kidding. And so I get it. But. I have such fear. And, and I met this really great um, business manager and we had a lot of conversations and I finally agreed. He explained how he was going to help me make money with my money. Yeah. <laughs> like switch it to a savings account. Yeah. But, um, and then slowly over years, that was 20 years ago. And then bit by bit, I handed over like different little cash accounts that I had after six years. He goes, is there more <laughs> like you keep handing over these little, like, I was like, I had $10,000 socked away here. And then I had 30 here. And finally he's like, are we done? I said, we're done. So now I trust him yeah. implicitly. We meet a couple times a year. I get statements every month, but I don't see the actual check. Yeah. So I don't see them. Oh, you don't see the check. I don't see the actual check. Like it goes check. somewhere, but it you don't see it. It goes somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I don't, it doesn't, I don't open it. I don't go to the mailbox and, and open the exact, exact check. What do you, we, we have similar lives. Obviously, you're <laughs> massively more successful than me. I don't know if that's true. But we have similar lives in the you sense that- You have like that millions we, of followers, right? It's meaningless. Is it? Yeah. Aren't you afraid you're going to lose them? Uh, every day. It's the same thing with you. You think you're going to have your last job, and I'm sure this is my last podcast. This is it, guys. Let's let's go <laughs> with a bang. bang. <laughs> Fucking blow it up. <laughs> um, but we have similar lives. We both got divorced. We both live in the same area. Mm-hmm. Our kids go to the same school. Mm-hmm. It, what do you make of this life out here? This LA life. This um, the going to. I saw you at the uh, the thing where we were raising money. 
Yeah, uh, first, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw you there. What do you make of this life? I, do you ever go, you know what? Let's go to Montana. Or yes. You do. I do all the time. I don't know where it is. I have this fantasy of a place where you can go. But first of all, I have to reframe the whole thing because I th- always think, when I think of it, like, I'm going to go to some magical town in Idaho where the kids ride <laughs> their bikes to school. And yes. The air is fresh and clean. There aren't, like, two weeks straight of 105 degree heat yeah. dome days. And... In my mind, my kids are like little though, but they're 13, 13, and 15 now. The reality is they're like, oh no, they'll be like, fuck you, mom. Yeah. There's no fucking way I'm going to a small town. I'm finally getting my shit together and I can't wait to party. Yeah. And I, there's girls and we live in LA, let's go. Yes, that's how <laughs> mine are. I, I, I said, oh, you guys, I might move to Calabasas. And they were like, no, what? No, 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 no. I mean, we like love- the Kardashians are there. I know. I've been, they to, are. I've been to one of their houses. I mean, pretty I don't, nice house. I, this I don't understand. Hey, you know, people, I mean, I, 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 it's a small town. It is. It I is mean, a, you've met so many people. Come on, don't. Yeah, start. but I, I also had the pleasure of being massively pregnant when I did the pilot for Modern Family. Yes, and then we went to work six, eight weeks later. Yeah, after I gave birth, and then on May seventh, and we went to work in July. So, so they greenlit it that fast. It, and and it, uh, so I was literally nursing and had three babies for the entire, like all of modern, the beginning of modern family. And then everything, like every time I went out at yeah. night, anytime I went to an award show or something, I was like, guilt, guilt, guilt. I got to get home. I got to yeah, get home. Yeah. I got to be up for, um, we used to call it vagina time because it was like, well, can't someone else drive them to school in the morning? And I was like, it's vagina time. I got to do it. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but I have to do it. I got to do it. I felt so but, much guilt and no one else felt that same. That was why, that was why my ex-wife and I got divorced a hundred percent. Cause because she, she had a job. Oh, she works in TV or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was home taking care of the kids and, and, and she felt horrible about it. And it made her. It so made divorcing made her feel better. No, but I feel I'm like, just confused. She's like, if I don't see it, it'll be much better. <laughs> no, but I think I think she would want me to do stuff, and then I'm not going to do it the way she does it. Right. So she'd be like, why didn't you do it this way? And I'd be like, I, I'm, but I'm then not you're, you. But then you're divorced, and then it turns out you just have two separate households. And I am I'm a fucking. God bless my ex-husband. I'm like a type A micromanager from hell. <laughs> and now he gets to do whatever he wants with the kids 50% of the time and do it his way. And you're like, wait, maybe I, I got to think this one through again. <laughs> maybe divorce wasn't the best idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we do, we lived so differently. It's why we're not together. We have very different styles. He's of, more free flowing and you're more. I am very, yeah, I'm uptight. That's, so that's you can my, say it. my ex-wife and all her friends are like that. Or they uptight. all have big jobs. They're all, they run networks and they run yeah. agencies and they're actors. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, I saw that a lot. That was like a big thing that I, I just couldn't, when I got divorced, I, I, I just wanted to be out doing stuff. I wanted to be out shooting. I wanted to be out. I didn't want to be like sitting and drinking wine and hearing the same stories from the same three people over and over again. And I felt bad about it. I really did, but it just wasn't who I am. Were the same three people your children? No, no, no. I'm not talking oh, about my kids. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, talking about- you're drinking wine with your children? <laughs> I just want to be, I just want, so you wanted to go out to then, to then getting- I didn't getting, want to go out and get laid. I wanted to go out and film. Liar. And no, I, it's true. It really wasn't what it was about. Like it, for, for this job, for that YouTube job, mm. it did take, um, you'd go to work at four o'clock and you'd be out till one. And then I'd get up and take the then kids where to school. Were the, who was with the kids then? Uh, my ex-wife would be with the kids, or oh, there, okay. there were nights. There were nights where I would take the kids. I still I see the kids three nights a week. I mean, okay, and I drive them to school every day. I mean, I am a good dad. I know. I know. I look like a drug addict in the neighborhood. No, you just went um, through a phase where yeah. I was vaguely concerned that you had like an autoimmune thing, or maybe <laughs> just straight up heroin. I don't know. You ever I, done heroin? No. No. You ever done I, any drugs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I think I was very lucky that uh, I I throw up if any, I take any pain. Like Tylenol 2 with codeine. Remember that? <laughs> that was like a year. And you could get it in Europe, like over the counter. And everyone's like, psych, we get codeine. Was it good? Barf, I'd barf for two days. Oh, really? So like I had kids and I had to have local anesthetic only. Uh-huh. I couldn't get a 
I couldn't do a, what is the thing, an epidural? Yeah. That made me throw up. Oh, really? Yeah, I throw up with any kind of painkiller. And I think I'm very lucky because on the other side, I absolutely loved all the other drugs. They were super fun. <laughs> yeah. They were. And my kids know that. Like, did you have to have that talk with your kids as you start to like talk fentanyl? about these things? No. Yes. I, I do, though. <laughs> I do have a bucket of fentanyl test strips in my house. Marnie just called me the other day. She's like, you have to get these fentanyl test strips. Dancesafe.org. I mean, yeah. I'm not, they don't, I, they, they send you a pack of 24 of them or something. I am so terrified because we could be assholes as kids. Yeah. We could do stupid things. We could like snort a line of Ritalin at, or cocaine or whatever, and you weren't going to die. Yeah. It's a tough now message. Now they're going to die. It's a tough message to say, don't do drugs. But if you do, test them. Is it though? Would, wouldn't you give your kid, a, your son a condom? Yeah. So you're, it's yeah. the same message. It's like. I mean, Mike, I don't think that my kids, you know, they'll punch me if they were saying, but I'm like, you guys, I think should never have sex in my mind. They're like perfect yeah. little beings and they should never have sex. But if they do, they sure as hell better wrap it up. Yeah. And, um, and I never want them taking pills and powders, but what, and what if it's not even them? What if they're at a party? You see other kids doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a hero. Yeah, no, I agree. You, def you definitely should tell them. It's just, it's just tough. It's just wild. Like he was at a party the other night and apparently- there was drugs and there was alcohol there and uh where were the parents they were i think they were there see i don't understand this <laughs> i don't get it either i don't get this either like <laughs> and it, my and my covid was a blessing in some ways yeah we got we got to skip it we had like a year in. and a half of like you're not going to a party there's no such thing no fucking way i'm sure they all watch porn the entire time <laughs> but there were no parties they were not getting in like IRL trouble. And now I'm, I, yeah, no, I'm terrified that they're going to end up, um, no, no joke, like doing pills and powders and dying. Whereas we could do that stuff and just get hung over or be an asshole or be stupid or, or just uh -huh. be an addict, but not be dead. Yeah. Just I told, I told them the other day, I said, just call me if there's someone's drunk, like I'll, I won't be mad. I'll come anywhere to pick you up. I'll literally make a joke out of it. Like, so just, and he, he seems to get it, but when did you start having that conversation? Um, yeah, when he started to go to parties. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I started when they were like 10. Don't drive drunk. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> don't get in a car with someone who's drunk. Like, they were like, why are we having this conversation? Cause I, cause did I mention I'm uptight and type A? I read all yeah. the books. There's not a book about like the parenting and like boys and sex and all this that I haven't read. And it's like, have the conversations early and often, early and often. That's gotten you far, your personality though, your type A personality. Yeah, well. Hasn't it? Like I, to be an actor, to get where you are, because I think there's a lot of people that watch this who are younger that want to be actors. Did you think they're and, younger? And you got to be younger than me. <laughs> I'm Methuselah. And you went, you went to the pinnacle. You won two Emmys. Yeah. It's Emmys nuts. Emmys. What does it take to get where you are? Is it luck? Is it hard work? How, what percentages? It's, uh, I mean, I worked really, really hard. But How? I had this, this I mean, I went to, I went to acting classes yep. and I went on auditions. But somebody told me somewhere along the way, very early on, I was auditioning for commercials and guest spots. And somebody said, it's a numbers game. You have to audition, and I don't know what the fuck, where they came up. It was like, you have to fit, it's going to be 50 no's for every yes. And I took that, like, gospel. I was like, great. So I just got out there, and I'd audition, audition. They'd be like, no, no, no. And I'm like, great, I'm getting closer. Getting close to 50. I'm getting closer to 50. Yeah. And somewhere around, like, you know, 30, I got a yes. And I'm like, oh, I'm ahead of the game. Yes. I never thought it was bad to get the no's, because I was like, you, it, this is a fact. You have to audition 58. It's oh, not a fact. I love that. That is not a fact, but it helped me yeah. enormously. Yeah. And I just took every no as like, oh, well, you have to collect the no's. And how did you get so funny? Was that just natural? Or did you no. Go to, did you go to the ground leagues? <laughs> no. Like, I saw you do this little thing last night. I was watching Modern Family. Oh, no. And it was so good. It was, it was something that if I was asked to do, I don't think I could do it. It was a bit where you have, to, you have a thing where you tell someone they died but you can't not smile. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you know that it's funny? Does, do, you, do you do it for Steve Levitan at the table and he goes, that's it? You try it and you say, oh, I really got something here. I, I look at it from a completely different angle, which is they realize that I can't actually tell. They would write jokes 
and I would fuck them up. Uh-huh. And they're like, she can do physical shit though. She can fall and she does shit with her face uh-huh. and she has no problem looking like an asshole. So let's write to that yes. because uh, they would write like jokes and I would just like, go, ah, ah. I, I'm terrible at a joke. I could never be a stand up comedian. Uh-huh. I don't know how to land the plane uh-huh. right now. I, I don't saw know you do how. Ellen's set. You did that great. Oh, well, I imitate she dressed her. up as she went on Ellen's show for the tenth anniversary. I don't know something. You no, know, it was like her one one millionth show. One millionth show. It was her one millionth show. <laughs> Ellen did a no, million. It was shows. like her twentieth anniversary. It was something crazy. So she dressed up as Ellen and she went and she did Ellen's set from Carson. Her first Carson set. She had the mullet. And I spent days practicing that in the mirror because that was just that was literally I just wanted to get her intonation. Yeah. And her exact timing really because good. I would have no idea how to do that. But you must know how to deliver lines because you got to the highest, you got to a sick, you did tons of sitcoms. You did Happy Gilmore. You did all these things. You must, I mean, must be good at lines. I've seen you in movies and in TV shows deliver, hit the joke. I don't know. I think that I'm okay at it. You and think I think okay that other, there's anybody that that's where the luck comes in. Like I was, I got lucky. There were so many people that it could have been Claire Dunphy. Yes. It easily. So many. So many. I just got lucky. Because, you know, have you ever produced anything? Yeah, you've made no. short films. I think you said you made a movie. What? What happened? Lights. There's cameras here. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, yes. But auditioned people. Yes, I have. I have auditioned people. Okay. And that was very eye-opening. Yeah, because you realize somebody will come in and be like, they're amazing. And someone else will be like, if it looks like the person from that we used before. Yes. Or that kind of reminds me of my my cousin's wife, and she's yes. such a bitch. And then, and then some people will be madly in love with somebody, and somebody else won't. It's not personal. No, it's it not. It isn't like, oh, that was the best. It was yeah. like, well, we all agreed. What's it like when you're sitting there, and you're at the Emmys, and you're nominated? What, what was that? I'm just like already full body sweat. You're you're taking me to my you had a, to my sad place. Oh, I love it. Let's go. Oh. You had such a visceral reaction when I said you're sitting there about to win an Emmy. So you're at the Emmys. Mm-hmm. You're with your husband. You're with the cast. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, it's a lot of people there that you love. Mm-hmm. And then you're nominated. It's best supporting. Is that what you want? Best supporting. For? What are you thinking as as they say it the first time that there's no way to win. There's no way to win this. There's right. no way to win because if I win, I actually have to walk up on stage and say something which I can't do because <laughs> my mouth is so dry and I'm panicking. And if I if I don't win, then I lose. And I'm a loser. And even though that's what I think oh, should happen, right. that's also very sad. <laughs> so there's no way to win. Got it. It's just a it's a oh. setup that whole day. Our second sponsor today is Every Plate. Yes, Every Plate. We love them. What a great meal kit company this is. The meals come right to my door. I eat them up. I love the Super Smash Burgers, the Steak Chili Ponzu Bowl, and the Creamy Lemon Herb Chicken. These are my favorite meals, guys. They are so delicious. And let me tell you something. You would think that Every Plate is something uh, that you couldn't afford. Well, guess again. Every Plate is actually 25% cheaper than going grocery shopping. And it's actually 58% cheaper than doing takeout or going out to eat. I mean, I don't know what more I have to say. This is where it's at. With every plate, you can be healthy. You can control your portions. As you guys know, I recently lost some weight. So much of that is portion control. And that's what I love about every plate is that the portion is there. And I know exactly how much I'm supposed to eat so I can keep my bikini body. I don't know if you know this, but here's the big one. Did you know? That every plate is just a dollar forty nine per meal. Are you kidding? A dollar forty nine per meal. That is so cheap. That's cheaper than fast food. That's cheaper than going to the grocery store. It's saving you so much time by not going to the grocery store. And right now, guys, you can get your first box for just a dollar forty nine per meal by going to everyplate.com and using my code NASH. 149. That's Nash149 at everyplate.com. Guys, you will not be disappointed. Uh, The meals are tasty. The meals are healthy and they are fast. And they're a great company. They've been advertising on this podcast. And I really want to thank them for uh, for coming back a a second time. And a special thanks to you guys for supporting Every Plate. Continue to do so if you love this podcast. Okay, back to the episode. The first year that I was nominated and they said, and the Emmy goes to... And I, I see in slow-mo, like a car crashing. And I'm like, 
<laughs> oh, and they're like, Jay, not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to go up there. Right. Um, and I probably, I figured I'd never be nominated again. I made it through. And then I won the following year and I thought, oh, this is going to be bad. I'm going to have a heart attack in front of all of these people. And how did you do when you went up there? How was the speech? Did you go back and look at it? No, never, never, no. never, never. And everyone, my cast was responsibly mad at me because they were like, Julie, you knew you had a chance to win this. I was like, you prepared nothing. Like they weren't mad. They were right. like, that's just JV, like prepare something. Yeah. And I was like, preparing something feels like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think it was douchey of them. I just feel like I would have been douchey. I, I have a huge problem with award shows. It, 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 it's, I think they're really dumb. They're crazy. I think they're unfair to the people that get nominated. I think it's- There's I, no I, way to win. It, it's just, yeah, it's just so, like, it, I guess, you know, you just look at it and you're like, oh, they're just making money off you. Yeah, it's an, uh, it you know, is, it, it is. In a way. But there is a lot of fun stuff around it that's right. really fun. And there are parties and I used to go to them and do that stuff. But again, home by midnight because vagina time. Um, you know, 6 a.m. You got to get up. You got to feed. You got to you gotta drive them to school. So. Are, you, are you doing anything new now? I know you have a podcast called Quitters. I listened to that last I'm, night. Yeah, I have a podcast called Quitters. It's, and Tell us um, about that. Uh, well, it's a podcast I do with a guy named Chad Sanders, who's much smarter than I am. Yeah. He wrote a book called um, Black Magic about surviving the trauma of being black in America. And if you can survive that, you can survive anything. And uh, I think he thought I was smarter than I am <laughs> because I had met him because I wanted to I wanted to do something with him. I'm trying to produce things. I'm trying to do stuff that where the camera isn't in your face watching you like age like an apple oh where the God. worms are eating it. And you're like, oh, I know. No one needs that. I know. That's how I feel too. It's terrible, but it's also so unfair when you go, I don't, are you like off of all like trash media or do you look at it still? Uh, no, I don't. I don't read anything. Yeah, I don't. I banned all that a long time ago. And, um, but I still, you can't help. You'll be looking at hard news about like, like in Ukraine, and it'll be like, Sir Jessica Parker needs filler. <laughs> but, and then they, and like it's on the side, and it's like, Nicole Kidman, now that's a fresh face. What's wrong? And you're like, I'm not clicking it. I'm not, it's mean to everyone. Yes. Um, and I just don't want to be, I just don't want to appear there. I just want to, I just want to fade it behind the camera in a graceful way. You want to direct, right? Um, I, well, I've directed some, I directed some Modern Family. And, um, did you like that? Was that hard? Is that a hard job? Terrifying. I was the only actor on the show who did it. So I was like, yeah, why is no one else doing this? Yeah. Well, why we should all be doing this. Right. Right. So I thought it was, it was scary. Those people are so talented. What are I going to go over and be like, Ty, (laughs) I have an idea. (laughs) What if? Well, that part is, you are really skilled at to say to Ty Burrell, Oh, what if you tried it this way? Cause you've, you've been there. That's the, that is, working with actors to me is the fun, easy part. Yeah. It's the 4,000 meetings about, like, there's the pre-production meeting and then there's the tone meeting and there's all these meetings that are necessary and they're great so that everyone's working as a team. But when they're like, so Julie, person we've worked with for years and never asked your opinion ever, should we paint the wall in this or do you want white? And you're like, fucking no. Did you, I'm supposed to have an opinion about painting the wall? I don't have any, I, I'm like. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've been given a chance to direct things and the same thing, I go, I don't know. And your context clues like, you're like, okay, is this the guy who smiles when I get the right answer or when the raw, and you're like, I think white is exciting, boring, boring, it's boring. I knew it, white is boring. I hate, I, I hated that, but. Um, I think it's also, I need to do it more yeah. so that I'll just get over it and realize you, I, did, I wasn't hiring these people. They were already hired. They were magnificent at their jobs. And I just basically got to a point where I'm like, you obviously know better than I do. Do you get um, offers every day? No. For what? You must. For what? Movie, independent movies, I'm sure. The mom. The mom. The mom. I, I'm and working. you're less interested in in acting still. Or you still want to do it? I know. I it? love acting. You do. I just don't. I don't want to. Claire Dunphy. She was awesome. I loved her. This, right. I'm. But I don't want to be like suburban mom. Suburban mom with a big foamy finger ring. No kids. 
<laughs> you don't want to play that. That is that does feel like a bit of a retread for me. Um, you know, all my friends were so the younger friends were so excited you were coming today. Yeah, where I don't I don't see that. I wouldn't let them come. Why? They all asked to come. <laughs> Who were your younger friends? Um, you know, like Todd was really excited that you were here. He asked Todd to come. Todd is cute. I know who he is. I looked him up. <laughs> he goes by Toddy, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow, you really know. I looked him up because I looked at pictures. This is my deep dive. I was like listening and re and then I'd see someone cute would catch me. I'm like, oh, that one's cute. And then I would look in the picture and go Toddy and then I'd read all about Toddy. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I, I have a really nice relationship with all of them and it's like, we, we go make content and, and they're, they're just the best. I didn't have that when I was married. I didn't have friends like that. Like I got married. You didn't have like a passel of 20 year olds that you hung out with when you were married. No. God, that's hard to imagine. Well, Todd's like 30. So he's a now. little bit all older. Yeah. But how long have you been part of the vlog NATOs? Uh, 16 years. Yeah. No, I mean a, a while, five years. Wait, he's, oh, five years. I thought you were 16. I was like, is that possible? <laughs> like since there was an iPhone. Yeah. Um, only five years? No, it's yeah. more than that. No. Yes, it has to be. No, I've done YouTube for five years. I did I did Vine for a couple years before that, okay. but I wasn't like hanging out with them. I was just doing okay. social media. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, everybody was really excited and they're, you look so good. You look so great. You should know that. You know, you're like it's, I just stuff. don't want to pop up on the, on the news crawl on the side. Julie Bowen, what happened? <laughs> It's Julie like, Bowen takes down the blog so mean. It's a mean business. How, how do you deal with that? Well, how, the meanness? Yes. I, I, I completely P-U-S-S-Y'd out and I stopped acting. And I, I, I do this. That I, was a I big, feel so bad, but it's I-E-D. <laughs> it's not Y-E-D. <laughs> Smasharded. Um, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm sorry. I, That's I, why I'm I, I was, Who could deal with I, I was at, I was auditioning and trying to sell movies and stuff. And I said, fuck this. I am done. But geez, what is meaner than the, than the YouTube reverse? Oh, the comments? Like that stuff is mean. mean. Doesn't mean anything to me. You don't read them. No, don't read them. And if I do read them, you have to, you, you know that like people, they comment to be seen. So they're going to say the meanest thing about Julie Bowen that they can come up with oh, so they can be seen. I don't look at those comments either. And it's yeah, yeah. It gets so scary. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's not real. None of it is real. Like even TMZ are like, that's not real either. You know what I mean? No one knows the full story behind stuff. And especially like gone, going through like uh, um, cancellations and stuff like that. I've gone through that. And your drug addiction. And my drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> the terrifying state when we thought we were going to lose you. Yeah, but no one knows the real story. No, no one does know the real story. You know? But when you are like, okay. That was really eye-opening to me to be, to be on the other side of it, to be the one that is in the tabloid. Yes. That was like, oh. And then you realize, is that when you swore off of all of that stuff? Yeah, that was me when, too. I, that was me when too. I was like, oh, wow, none of this is real. What they say is not real. No, or, or watching my friends go through it, you're like, that's not how it happened. But then you must have, oh, these kids are young. Uh, a lot of the kids that you hang out with, and now like uh, one of them is 30. So <laughs> big ups. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that, you don't have any friends that are 30. Oh, I do. No, no, no. I hang out with, with my, my, I got my lady, my lady wives that get me through, because I'm producing some stuff now and it's all young women. They're all young. Yeah. They're all young. But Isn't they, that good though? Isn't that good to be with young it's people? It's fantastic. Yeah, it does. It gives you a different energy. It uh, makes me understand my kids. Also, I spent 11 years in Modern Family. Those kids were 11 when I started. They're, they're all now 23, 24. Yeah. And I love them and I hang out with them. Yeah. And I, and they're young. Yeah. So I don't, I put pooing it because it's funny to make fun of you. But I, I remember with those kids, with my fake TV kids going, you can't, Google yourself. You can't read the comments. You can't look at this shit. And they didn't care. Oh, yeah. They would read it, and they, but they had, like, buffalo hide about it. They were like, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, how do you do that? Our generation, I feel like we came to it. We were not digital natives, and it's too, too terrifying. Mm -hmm. They're like, I mean, to see, like, a blow up of your face and someone circles, like, like, ah, I don't want it. Have they ever, ever, ever gotten you on like on vacation, like in a bikini or anything like that's that? That's when I, that was when I, I was yeah. like, and that's 
that's a wrap on fucking trash mags. I used to love to read trashy magazines at the gym yep. or at the nail salon, whatever. Yep. And I had just, I'd had twins. And they were about eight or nine months old, but that does a fucking number on yeah. your body. Yeah. I had big fat babies and they were, my stomach was not awesome. When you say it does a number on your body, mm -hmm. I, I'm literally, I don't, I'm an idiot. I don't know. It like, it, it, you have to. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I'm just I, can't, I know. Now I'm digging. I'm, right I'm, now. I'm literally, like, I have a yes. shovel in my hand and I'm digging my Go own grave. Go on. <laughs> Your stomach becomes ex not as tight as it was or what, what it, happens? One baby I've, in my experience, I recovered pretty well from. Uh -huh. But that baby was like in my uterus. Yeah. Now, and your uterus is like, you know, and it, it's sort of here. The twins were double decker. Yeah. So that top one, Gus, <laughs> um, and he was the big one. And he was on top. And he literally was like popped up here, up high. It's still in the uterus, but up high mm. and just busted the muscle each day. Would just stretch it and stretch it and stretch it until you, by the time when you have the baby, you're, your stomach not only is flabby because you had a baby, you can lose the weight and there's like a weird sort of hanging thing because the muscles are all busted. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. That's, that was the joy of twins for me. Uh -huh. So we were in Hawaii actually shooting Modern Family and um, I was with my husband at the time. We went for a run and it was super hot. And I was like, let's just jump in the ocean. No one's around. And he was like, uh, let's go get bathing suits. He's always, he's always smarter than me. But... Because that would have been You were going to really go bad. naked. I was going to go, like, or underwear only. Yep. Like, but, like, sweaty, running sure. under, like, bad. Yeah. So, we run back to the room, throw on some bathing suits. Sweaty underwear. Go run down to this beach. No one is there. Not a, you look every direction, <laughs> there's no one there. And I, we're running in the water, we run out, we're sitting there. And I look down the beach really far away. I don't know if you've had this experience. You, you see something round and white, and you can't tell how close it is. Yeah. I'm like, is that a ball? A giant ball really far away? Is that a white tube really close? What is it? They were paparazzi in a cave because we were with Sophia and everybody else. Paparazzi yeah. didn't show up for me. But in a cave with, uh, with these huge um, uh, lenses, massive on tripods, so they could like telephoto. And by the time we got back to the room, the pictures were on the internet. No. And it was like, what is wrong with her? She's disgusting. Gross. I'm going to vomit. All that. And God bless my, they, they tore up my husband too. And they were like, what's, ew, gross. And he would, so I had at least a partner in it. He was like, and <laughs> no more of this ever again. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. brutal. Yeah. It's absolutely brutal. It yeah. makes me, it makes me want to uh, quit. Well, I quit looking at anything like that. Yeah. And, the th and you can't even look at it for somebody else. Because you would be like, I do want to see. Because I do. I'm a fucking human. I'm a filthy, disgusting, lewd human that yeah. wants to see other people's cellulite very badly. <laughs> but if I click, then the click gets registered and they win. Like the, the fucking tabloids win. Yeah. So I can't do that. I never, I was so naive about um, fame. Mm. So naive about it. Because I thought, oh, well, once you get there, it's great and everything's great. And it's not that way at all. It's, it's actually, there's a whole other thing that comes with it, which is people will try to tear you down for their own monetary gain. All day, every day. And not even monetary, just because they can. Or just be pissy, yeah. Just because they live in their mom's basement and no one will ever know it's them. Right. And they can say whatever they want. Right. And then, then during the pandemic, then everybody gets a podcast and, and adds a camera and they can just opine all day long about how badly you suck. Yeah. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I have to ask you about my favorite TV show of all time, which is Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> I was like, where's he going with this? <laughs> He's going to be like, and it's my three sons. And I just want you to talk about it for a while. Be like, yeah, okay. The Young and the Restless. The young and the Restless. <laughs> Dawson's Creek. Um, I was on Gwen on Dawson's Creek. I know you were on Dawson's Creek. Uh, one episode, but it was very meaningful to me. Why? Because I loved that show. You did? And so they asked me to come and do a guest spot. But it was later in the run at the point when the cast is a little like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, they, 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 the excitement is over for them. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm here. This is amazing. <laughs> and they were like, cool, cool. We 
been here for like, I don't know, seven years, you know, and I, I get it when you get, I try to remind myself of that when, you know, guest stars are coming to Modern Family at yeah. year 10. And I was just like, they are having their experience and be gracious. And not that the Dawson's Creek kids were kind, but they just weren't like, yeah. They were not, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's Dawson's chair. And they're like, yeah, it's fucking chill. So, um, Okay, your favorite show was Larry David. Oh, Larry David. Curb enthusiasm. Sexy, right? He's the, so sexy. He's but can you see that as a, as a? I'm assuming straight male. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to assume. I'll get canceled if I call him straight. I'll get canceled if I say. The only thing I can say is I was worried he was on drugs. I I, I am straight. I, sometimes I can't believe I am, but I am. I, I'm okay. so straight. Like I, I sometimes I I know I probably maybe come off as I'm not or whatever, but I am straight. I've thought about it many times being gay, and I just can't. Well, so then you, that puts you in the queue part, right? <laughs> yeah. Questioning? Isn't, am I, well, I, I couldn't have my the, initials wrong. I thought LG, you meant in the queue, like I'll, no, I'll no, fuck a line. guy, maybe fuck a girl. No, 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 no. I mean in the LGBTQ. Yeah, questioning. Oh, I am the queue. Uh, uh, okay, wait, what were we talking about? Oh, Larry David. Your favorite show. Uh -huh. Favorite show. Okay, so for me, yes, he's sexy. Of course. I mean, I, I, I'm not a... I, I'm not attracted to him, but I understand why women would like him. I for was, sure. I never got it until I went and guessed it on that show. Cause I was like, he's, he's, he sends himself up all the time as like, do you remember the original billboards? And it was him and that dog that looks just like him. Yeah. And they're like, you know, yeah, both yeah, yeah. looking very sort of hang dog. And, but then I met him and man, oh, he radiates energy. He radiates, he bounces along, he's got these sneakers, he's skinny, he's really fit, he's, he's really funny fit. as shit. Yeah. Funny counts. Yeah, funny's important to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny's yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. jam. It's the whole thing. Yeah. That's why you love Conan, and yeah. I, I love him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So what did you want to know about Larry? I just want to know, like, the scene, tell me, just like walk me through it. So they call you. you they, get, said, they said, that, well, that is like, to me, that was like huge. They were like, do you want to do, we're assuming you're going to say yes do you want to do an episode of Larry David? And I was like, yes, I do. Yes, yeah, I yeah, do. Yes, yeah. I do. I knew I was going to be like date of the week and I didn't care. I don't sure. care because he's a genius. And I also thought it was going to be really fast because it's all improv. No, that, that is, not, that is not true. It is improv. But then once they, they get down to what they like in the improv, they lock it in. Ah, and then you're doing regular old coverage and all that. Um, ah. but I, I, I was there for, I don't know. Did you, when you got there, did you get the scenario or you knew the scenario going in? They, I talked to uh, the producer ahead of time and told, gave me the broad strokes right. of what it and was. And the scenario is so funny. It's, it's that right. you I'm, know- I'm a teacher who fucked one of her students, but he was 18. Wait, 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 wait. I thought yours was the one about, <laughs> about um, the, the shortcut. Yes, but that was the trade of information. Oh, right. I said, I want to give you some information. I said, we need to share things about each other yes, yes, in order yes, yes. to get closer. And I told him that I had been a teacher and it's up with one of my students, but he right. was 18. Right. And then he said, I have a shortcut to the valley. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that's, that was so all I was told. Good. I'm like crying when I think about so it. So good. I have a shortcut to the valley and I'm like, I'm pissed. My character's like, the fuck? I just told you that I, like something really painful and vulnerable and he's like but my shortcut to the valley is really good <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it was it was really fun unreal it was, fun. it was very very fun and i made him laugh a few times and i have no idea whether any of that actually made it on i mean i watched the actual show but uh, i made him laugh when we were driving around in the car at one point he was like julie bowen you need to stop because i'm laughing too hard i was like oh that's awesome i'm retiring yeah i'm retiring right now Guys, today's episode is being shot in Happy Face Studios, and I'm here to tell you about two products that they have, which is truly amazing, the Vegan Immunity Gummies from Happy Face and also the Vegan Sleep Gummies. I have been using the Happy Face Sleep Gummies for a couple years now, uh, ever since Scott and Jay started. Uh, happy face and they are fantastic. They've got melatonin in them. They've got CBD in them and they put you right to sleep This is the cherry flavor my preferred choice uh, Please go check them out go to the link in the description right now and support happy face because they are supporting this podcast Okay, on with the show. Don't you get nervous when you're on someone else's show or do you? Mm, yeah When was the last time you were deadly nervous? I did Howie's show last week. I was I wasn't deadly nervous, but I was nervous. Is that when you were at his house for? Uh, we were at his studio in Van Nuys. Oh, okay. You should go do it. It's fun. I, I, 
I, I, if it, you want. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can't, I don't know why you're here, honestly. Because you were my neighbor that I was worried about. And I was like, I get to ask questions. <laughs> you're my neighbor. And Doug, was, Doug never said he doesn't have a, Doug never said he has a drug problem. Doug never said he doesn't have a drug problem. <laughs> why would problem. Doug say he doesn't have a drug problem? He, Doug, Doug, just Doug said, knows I don't have a drug problem. Doug just said, uh, I don't know. I mean, he didn't say that, that is very Doug to be like. Uh, I also, leave me out of it. I didn't know if I said like, hey, Doug, does neighbor Jason do a lot of blow? <laughs> like, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Decent just drugs. like, I, I keep seeing Jason up in, at Mulholland and is he okay? Yeah, one time I was swimming and you grilled me. Remember? I grilled you. Yeah. Yeah, because you were in the pool. <laughs> I was safe. <laughs> Explain that. I was, I, we, we, we go to the same... It's like a club. We did. I, I, I don't go there anymore. You're done? I yeah, I haven't seen you there. I moved because I moved I moved over to um to basically North Hollywood. Okay. It's called but not where I live. So one day I'm swimming and all of a sudden I see Julie Bowen and I'm like, oh man, Julie Bowen, that's crazy. And then you actually came over and grilled me for a while. Yeah, because why were you grilling me? Well, because you were finally you were in the pool. I don't like <laughs> to like I hate talking to people in the gym because it's a little bit of like- Oh, you have an exit. You could leave at any time because yes. I'm in the pool. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Like if somebody's in the gym, it's like a little bit, it's a little bit of private time. They need to like sweat and grunt and you kind of are in your zone doing your own thing and you don't want to be the person like you establish a talking thing at the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go come, come in like, oh shit, here comes the talker. You know, and like she's going to come in, we're going to have to talk. How are your kids? Like- Gym, and so I don't, I tried not to talk to people in the gym. Yeah. But then you were in the pool, and I was like, "That's that's I'm, safe space." I'm noise guy at the gym. You're, you're like, you're like, like I'm the guy <gasps> that makes the noises. I always have earbuds in. I couldn't hear. Oh, you. The, yesterday I was there, and and I went like this. I went <laughs> like that, and some woman, older woman, turned around the elliptical, and she just goes, "Oh." Well, there are a lot of older people there that get really. I had to. I wear like a sports bra when I'm working out, like. I have a t-shirt, but I'm wearing like a full covered sports bra. Remember, and I take off the t-shirt because I'm sweating because I'm yeah. properly working out. And one of the older guys- I know does, who you're talking about. Who does this thing. You know this thing that does this thing? <laughs> you're like, what are you doing? And they're reading. Meanwhile, they're reading. I know the guy that reads. Journal, and he goes, and I, so I'm sweating balls because I'm on the, on the, on the real bike, but not the lying down one. And I take my t-shirt off and I'm like, and he goes, don't, don't do that. Like, don't, don't do what? Like, I, am I such a horror for you? Yeah. Is it so painful? Yeah. I mean, I'm fairly fit. I got the stomach fixed. There was surgery. <laughs> I'm fine. Like, I'm not naked. I made it through the paparazzi thing in Hawaii. I mean, I'm here today to talk And now I'm getting it. shamed by yeah. the, the, ta the, 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 like, he, we, people have, everyone has problems with him. You should, you shouldn't feel bad. Because I've talked to every guy in there. He's, he's just, huge. and I've even talked to his wife. And his wife has- She has a problem with him. His wife has said to me, she said, um, she goes, I know he's horrible. I know he's horrible to you. She's like, he's just, that's who he is. And he's actually really nice. He just gets really upset in the gym. And I just go, okay. So then I, I just try to avoid him. I, I was not, I don't, I was not a fan. There was this one busybody who was in there. My mother, uh, she had surgery and I, I drove up there and I pulled up in front mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. let my mom out. Mm -hmm. And the woman came out and she was like, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. That's was this during COVID when you weren't allowed to do that? No, it was even before. Oh. It was like way before. I was like, she just said surgery. She's right. like, you still can't do it. You still can't do it. And I said, okay, okay. And then a, a couple weeks later, I saw her doing it. And I, <gasps> I was so excited. I was so excited. I walked did up. Did you just go like? I did. I went. I took the arms and I crossed them and I went. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's, it's like, that's why you like Larry David. That's because why like it's it. that kind of shit that mm -hmm. like you can think about and drive home and be like, I fucking bitch did it. Yeah. She did it. We, we have premises all the time that I want to send to Larry David and, <laughs> and, and just to see if he was like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that would be the way, the same way that, the same way that he said, oh, Julie Bowen, you're so funny. Like if I could send him like an oh. idea and have him be like, no, oh, yeah, we'll use it. I was nervous though because there's a lot of people that when you meet them in real life, they suck. Right? Yeah. Like there's some people that I never want to meet because I, I'm st like, I was, I'm in love with Stephen Colbert and I did meet him and he was a perfect angel. He's and the I was best. Like, 
this is this is exactly all I want out of the world. But like, what if I met Harry Styles and he was just like a fucking turd asshole? I don't think that's the case. I think Harry Styles. But we Styles don't know. Is like I really never, nice. I never want to meet him because I love him so much. But can't you tell, like, when you hear him on Howard or something, you're like, okay, this is this is like a nice person. We don't know. You just said we don't know anything. The media slices. But and Harry Styles, I'm and pretty and sure he might go back if he leaves and like smacks his <laughs> assistant across the face and is like, "Bitch, I said no ice cubes." We don't know. You like Harry Styles, huh? He is. Yeah. What, what, is he? Is he like the guy for you? If you would. No. If if Harry, no. Listen, it's not. It's not unfathomable because he he dates an older woman. Uh, yeah, but but he's happy. He's happily with the older woman. Oh, these things they go and they come and go. Listen. He used to live, I used to live right down the street from him. Yeah. Um, never saw him, not once. Yeah. Never saw him and didn't even know he lived there until I was moving out and the neighbors were like, oh, Harry just came by. And I'm like, um, but no, he, he's too beautiful. I can appreciate him now that I'm like old and out of, out of the range. Yeah. I can really just love on him. I can yeah. really love on him. It's people like, oh, I don't know. I like weird. You like Idris Elba. Oh, fuck yes, I do. <laughs> that was my ex-wife's hall pass. I mean... Yeah, he is something. He the voice. is so hot. And then he was on The Office and he was really funny. And then he was on, but then The Wire. Yeah, The Wire. Holy yeah. shit. That was, the Wire. That like, was cool, Idris. Oh, that was when no one knew about Idris No one Alba. even knew. And I yeah. thought he was American. Yeah. I know. Idris, I mean, that, that is like... I ne I was in an elevator with him once, and I lost my mind. He was wearing really cool shoes, and I was just like, mm, <laughs> "Did he like shoes?" <laughs> Did he recognize you? No, I mean he didn't. Say, I just he didn't say anything. Down. Why didn't you say something? Down, like, what am I saying? Hi, do you know me? I'm sort of well known, and you're an international <laughs> movie star. Like, what is you that your general rule of thumb when you meet somebody like famous? Is there some? Have I you, assume that I, they have no idea. You've got to be. You've been Always. at tons of Emmy parties and stuff. Have you ever like? seeing Quentin Tarantino and be like, my God, I have to say something. Or is there anybody like that that you've had a good interaction with? Yeah, no, no, one? no, there are. Like, if you're at an Emmy party or you're at a party where they're like celebrating your show or whatever, you kind of figure everybody kind of knows who you are. Yeah. And that that's that's a little easier. But uh, when you're like at a bar or a restaurant and you're like, oh, ah. there's... Or you're like in, bother them in a in a in a yeah. What am I gonna be like? Oh hey Idris. So here's the thing. I'm on TV. <laughs> so that gives me permission now in this elevator where you wish that you could die. Yeah. You're so uh, right. You're so right. I've, to I've, say things to you that you've heard all day from yes. everybody alive. Yes. It's going like oh my god. I never do this. <laughs> I. That's the thing. Like. I've been so fortunate to have people come up to me and say that. Yeah. And I've tried to be gracious and stuff, but they're like, I never do this. But, and I realize, oh, really famous people. I'm like this much famous. Really famous people hear that all day, every day. Yeah. And they literally see the eyes glaze over and they get the polite look because they're like, whatever you're saying, I've heard it. Unless you tell me that um, my work on The Wire revived your child out of a coma, <laughs> yeah. I've heard it. Yes, yes. And yes. I'm just going to nod and be polite because I got to get through this elevator ride. Yeah, I, 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 I had an interaction with Larry David once that didn't go well when I was much younger and it was bad. What? It wasn't bad. Do you want me to call him? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I, I wouldn't let you call him. <laughs> I'd call him. Even if you were drunk right now and you're like, let's call Larry David, I'd be like, no, <laughs> don't would, do it, Julie. I would never. No. I would never. I would be I, no, so no, mortified. What would he say if you called him right now? I, I don't, I mean, <laughs> what if it you would called go to, it? first of all, it would go to voicemail. Uh -huh. It would definitely go to voicemail. No, I bet it would pick up. No. Yeah, it of would course. Go to voicemail. It would go to voicemail. I mean, who picks up? You. Do you I would, if Julie Bowen calls you, you pick up. No. A hundred percent. Okay. Who, when was the last time? You don't know how guys think. They think, is it a, is a sex thing? He's married. If Ty Burrell called him, maybe he wouldn't pick up because he's Larry David. But if it's a sex thing, it doesn't matter if he's married. Oh, is he married? I thought he's divorced, but it doesn't matter. It does, di it he was divorced from the one wife. The environmentalist wife. Yep. And then he's married to somebody else now. Oh, he married somebody? Yeah, he married somebody. Oh, wow. Look at you. See? You, Q. I saw them once. Q ago. all the way questioning. I s he's like, we have our, we have our God, clickbait. <laughs> You are good at physical stuff. You're gonna be 
so sad later. And, like, <laughs> in bed tonight, like oh, uh, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, I, I think you're pretty cute. And uh, <laughs> I'd like to uh, maybe go on a second date, Jason, uh, you know. <laughs> Well, all right, that'd be great. That would be great. You know, I've got some sparks in my stomach and I feel, uh, you know. I think that he would just make you laugh the whole time you're having sex. It wouldn't matter if sex was good or bad. Because right. all sex eventually gets bad. Not. Is that true? Don't you think? Well, not bad. That's not fair. But like, it gets. It is. It is true. It's, 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 been, my ex, it's been my experience. It's, it's hard to keep the ball up in the air. Night after night. That might be your problem because the ball <laughs> is not what's supposed to go up. I've been doing it all wrong. Yeah, I've been putting the wrong end you in. Literally, to the vagina to get time. The ball in there. Yeah, that's your problem. <laughs> that is, wow. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm glad we worked this out, though. I'm so glad because next time you're gonna be like, I know what to do. It's the other ball. No, it's the penis. Um, I think, I think that there's that hot thing that happens in the beginning of like flirting and relationships and like it, everything. Someone's tongue is like, suddenly you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I want all of it. Yeah. And then the pheromones kind of fade and it's been like, what, three months or something? And yeah. Like, Get the fucking tongue away from me. You know what I mean? Like, ew. I'm, I'm, I'm in a relationship now and it's brand new and, I, and I'm worried it's gonna go away. It will. Yeah, I know. It will, brace for impact. But like, it doesn't mean you can't have fun. Yeah. But it's, oh, it will end. Not the relationship. You could be married for you. This could be the love of your life. I love how upbeat you are, but then you'll you'll drop a bomb like right every ten minutes. It was hot sex. <laughs> That's why I like basically retired from all of the dating and everything. Well, you don't date anybody. You, you everyone's chasing the hot. Are you on dating apps? The high. No. Why not? Are you? I was. Is that how you met your girlfriend? Yeah. We own Raya. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> so one of the beautiful young women that I work with, um, she knows it's like, I'm like, it's my stress toy. She hands me her phone and I swipe for her yeah. and I set up dates and I, I text guys. I, all of it. I love it. I bought it's, her a membership for Tinder so we could look at the guys or Raya. Sorry. For Raya. But bought her. You can't, you have to like audition for Raya. You have to be like, you have to do a type 10. You need to like send your body measurements. Jim McCauley has to look at your set. You have to like, yeah, you literally, you have to like show how many social media followers you have. Like Raya, you have to apply for. Just wait, is she really She got important? it. She's super important. I didn't know it. She's what? Is she really important and I don't know it? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, she's nobody. Don't worry. Do you ever get old and you laugh too much? Yes. And then your neck goes, ah. And then I would go, and my kids go, they go, ah, 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 ah. Because that's, I guess that's what I'm doing. Like, ah, 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 ah. And I'm like, it's charming. It's not charming. They make Awful. fun of you. They make fun of us. Yeah, the kids they make all fun make fun of, of us. Okay, wait, wait where, where were we? Raya. You were on Raya. So that's when they make you, so I like the app. I like the Bumble because I understand it. Yeah. Uh, non if I like it because it's easy. The interface is easy. Raya, you can only look at like 10 dudes a day or or dudes, wherever you are in the Q spectrum. <laughs> and um, they're vid like a video. Yes, well, you get a, um, a slideshow of pictures and it's like me at Burning Man, me with an elephant, me and something. What, what's yours? Was yours like, did you have the fish? The yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have the big fish no, picture? No, I, I don't fish. The dog? Nikki Glazer did this. She looked at my bumble. Oh, she did? She looked at my bumble and she uh, critiqued it and just told me everything was wrong. And it was really, it was really funny. Oh, I feel like uh, we feel like- I would like, let you do it, but I I would like it. to do an, uh, I think I could have a side hustle coaching dudes yeah. or girls on what not to have in there. The, one, the guys who put on just the picture, just the photo, because it'll be like, you know, there's opportunities to put on like every single thing from like what religion you are, how much weed you smoke, what your job is, what you make, you know, do you love your mother? And then some dudes are just like, <laughs> and it's just like. But doesn't terrible. that work? No. If you're good looking, no. if you have like a hot body, it works. I, okay, that that's a self-selecting group. They can go fuck themselves. I see. I, I, but. But I would like to, I'd actually like to follow some of those guys around and be like, how's that working out for you? Because the girl has no idea what you are. You're like a murderer. You are hot, but like hot murderer. You're just like a terrifying I person hate to, to say it, date with. It's a numbers game. It's, you gotta go on 50? You gotta go 50 <laughs> Yeah, you gotta go 50. How many Raya dates did you go on before you found? Um, I don't know. The next over the, Nash. over the, I've been divorced eight years. I don't know. Been on 20 dates. 
What's your go-to? What was your go-to date? Where would I take them? Yeah, you like oh, great question. Ache. Um, probably. Oh, it's gonna sound really stupid. Flaming bowling. I would. T- I've been to um, the sushi place here across from the Mondrian. Is really good because you can get skewers, and I cannot eat. Uh, I don't have to have rice. So I don't have to eat carbs because <laughs> I don't like to eat a lot. I'm like a chick. What happened to huh? you? I mean, you said your mom gave you a hamburger and told you it was good for you, but there's something else that happened. I mean, my father was horrible. If you he, want, if you was, if was you he want. like abusive? I mean, no, nah, like a little bit. Is he alive? Yeah, he's alive. You say this and he's alive. <laughs> you say this out loud. Both of my parents are alive and they are saints. Until the day they are gone, they will be saints. <laughs> and then when they die, I might new podcast. Uh, new podcast. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They. Do they know where you are? And do they know? Yeah, they my could- father, my father is great. He's uh, great now. He just like was not. My father was like a great guy. Everyone loved him. And he just wasn't good at being a dad. That's all. He was, he was, he was out like doing, he was an only child. And I don't really have any like, I don't have any ill will about it either. Like I, I literally called him once when I was like 26 and I was like 28. And I was like, hey, I just want to let you know that um, I'm good with everything that ever happened when we were kids. And he was taken aback. He was kind of like, he was like, um, um, well, okay, okay. And I was like, I was like, I'm really good with it. I'm like, I put it into my comedy. Like it's made me who I am. It's made me really strong. It's made me really tough. Um, I can take anything. Um, Except a grain of rice. <laughs> It's where I draw well, the a, line, Dad. That's a conversation with my mother. Not with I my cannot father. My father, eat any food. My father was telling me not to eat so much. He that was one good thing that he did. Oh, okay. And okay. he did a lot of good things. He did a lot of good things. And 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 he's he was loving. He just had like a side where he would snap. Mm-hmm. And um and then and then he, and it's a big theme that we've been talking about on this podcast, which is just like empathy and stuff. Like um, especially when my friends are fighting or whatever, or, or people are mean to on the internet, like where do they come from? Stuff like that. But, but anyway, let me, let me continue. So then he just said, he told me his soul story. You know, he was, um, his business partner was murdered. He didn't have any money. He went through. Wait, this is your father? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, did you know this when you were growing up? You I knew, I knew the business partner was murdered. They came to his house at 2 a.m. Because he, and he murdered him. My dad? Your dad's the murderer. <laughs> That's the thing no one's put Cold together. Cold case with Julie Bowen. They've never this found fall. the murderer. And all of a sudden she's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dad is a no, Would they- you do a, a cold case type show? Would you do like a-, a, a Flashlights what? down the alley. It's like say? flashlights down the alley. Yeah, I, don't I, I don't know what that is. You know what? <laughs> oh, oh. That, but I, you're such a good actor that I'm like, when even when you go like this, I'm like, I see it. And you're like just collecting DNA samples. Um, I will never disparage those shows because that is, yeah. I would I would be honored at some point to yeah. be on one. I still want, I'm still trying to do something a little bit like, I don't know, more that I own. That's weirder and, and yeah, yeah, different, yeah. but- You need the Veep. I, that's, I mean, my God, that's where's, what you need. where's you my need Veep? You need your Veep. I want my Veep. Guys, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is an amazing ac- actress in the same category as Julie, for sure. I it's think, you're, I think you're just as funny. Beat, beat me. She went from Seinfeld and then she got this like critically acclaimed show called Veep on HBO. And he has to explain that because all of his viewers are 12. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. We used to have rotary phones <laughs> and it would take a really long time to dial a nine. And a, oh, a nine is the worst. <laughs> nine was no, the worst. Zero. Oh, a zero, zero. right. Uh, yeah. well, I'm a little bit younger than you, so. Um, <laughs> they moved to zero by the time you came along. <laughs> so anyways, I'll, t- I'll finish the dad story because you're interested. Uh, no, I know you are. And, I am. And, and I know you are. And then a couple months later, we were in Martha's Vineyard and he was like, let's go take a walk. And I was like, oh, fuck. Uh-oh. This is bad. How didn't... old are you now? 28. I had kids. Okay. Uh, um, I was older than 28 when I made that phone call that night. Maybe I was 32, whatever. Okay. Whatever. And he got me, he took me on this long walk and we're going and looking around Martha's Vineyard. And it's not a very pleasant walk. You know, it's just like, what's, what is this? You know? Martha's Vineyard is an island, kids. It's a beautiful, beautiful, fancy island. People go there to vacation. Rich people go there. Context. Keep going. <laughs> Steven Spielberg shot Jaws there. Um, and, and then he, he 
told me, he stopped me at some point at, at this like big outlook where it was like so beautiful. And he just said, I'm so sorry. And he cried. <gasps> and he was like, I was an asshole. I should have, I should have done more. And I was fucked up. And I, you know, and it was like. Whew. On Martha's Vineyard, they don't let white people cry. That is like, that is the richest fanciest place we were in oaks bluff which is a little cheaper it's a little it's, uh, oh, it's sti uh, like it's still you know it's still the upper east side you know what i mean yes, it's it it's still the upper east side and he was sitting you down that's where by the way oak bluffs is where president obama has a house um oh is it yes well i remember edgar town being like more expensive than Oak Bluffs, but maybe now it's all expensive. It's all pretty fancy. It's I'm sure just, Mr. Obama, President Obama's house is in the millions and millions and millions of dollars. So what did you respond when your dad is crying to you? Um, I just said, yeah, like, okay. Yeah, you, apology accepted. Like, that's it. Like, what, what, if, what would I? It's, but very few people get that moment. Yes. Like That's where true. somebody with whom you've had a fraught relationship is like, hey, unbidden, I am going to ask you to go for a walk and I am going to tell you that I was a shit heel and I should have done better. I'm going to cry. I mean, if I get that, I'd be like, fucking hang it up. I would love it. Yeah. That would be so satisfying. But usually, because I have a lot of um, narcissists in my life uh -huh. and they don't ever. You live in LA. What? You live in LA. Yes. <laughs> but I always thought a narcissist was just somebody who really thought that they were they were cool and that they were pretty and they thought about themselves a lot. I didn't realize what a deep, deep psychological problem it is. Yeah. Like that they cannot understand that someone else, like they leave the room and they don't know that the other person is still there. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. that room stopped existing when they left. <laughs> they have no ability to abstractly think about other people and their feelings. I have a friend who thinks that the world actually stops. And I don't know if he's like, fucking with me, but he'll literally be like, I'm gonna leave now and you're gonna stop. And I'll be like, what? How old like, is this child? He's, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's- Is he drinking He's an age? adult. He's an adult? He's an adult. I hope he's fucking with you. I don't know. Because that is really, but, but because narcissists never see that they're narcissists because they feel deeply uh -huh. about themselves. Yeah. They feel so deeply and they're like, I'm not a sociopath because they're not. They cry, they feel, they love as long as it's about them. And then the minute it isn't about them, they're like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and those are the people that I have the biggest problems with in the world. Yeah. And, I, and, and they're never going to go, oh, I just realized something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I need to apologize. And so do you get all those people out of your life or you still deal with them? Um, well, I didn't realize, I, like I said, I didn't realize what a profound thing it was. I was like, yeah, Hollywood's full of narcissists. Mm -hmm. All over the place, of course. Now I can identify them much better and I have a much better strategy for dealing with them. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, I've been in therapy for my entire life. I cannot remember a time that I wasn't therapy. Really? No, 13 on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good well, for I you. had a wicked, I mean, you don't own eating disorders, maybe. I had a terrible eating disorder and had... Uh, was in therapy forever for that. And then I kind of got better with all that because then they came up with Prozac mm -hmm. and it really helped. And that helps. Oh my fucking God. Really? Mm. But then I went on. Uh, it's terrible you had an eating disorder and then you also, that's your job too, is to like. Look. Having an eating disorder, <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, no, you have to look good. Yeah, but it doesn't. You know, like the, that those sucks. Those two things are, they're not really related, they're I feel not. like. Don't you, I mean. Don't, I have an eating disorder. Right, you have an eating disorder. And, and, I, and, every, and, and literally last night I was like, don't eat those chips, fucking Julie Bowen's coming tomorrow. Like that's what I said is sitting in my house. And, and I'm looking at the chips and, and they, were, they, were, they were healthy chips too. And I was like, don't do it, Julie Bowen's coming tomorrow. You're not gonna, And what am I gonna do, feel fat good. caliper you? Huh? But you know, when you have an eating disorder, you can't see, yeah, the whole, you can't see the world in a real way. No. You can't see yourself in a real way. How's your dysmorphia? That's the real question. Terrible. Because I lost weight now and I still look at myself and I'm like, uh. But I know I'll gain, like, eventually I'll probably gain it back. And then I'll look at the pictures now and I'll be like, oh, damn, I was fucking looking good. But do good. you look in the mirror right now and do you see the same thing? Do you think you're seeing reality reflected back to you? Um, I see reality looking back to me, but I see what I see is got to gotta get rid of this. Okay. Whereas somebody, somebody else... 
if, if a friend hadn't seen me in a couple of weeks, they'll come in and they'll be like, oh, Chase, you look great. You look great. Yeah, you look good. Like, oh, You thanks. do. You look great. Thanks. I'm trying. No, but you, you I do. Hike, I hike Runyon. That was what took all the weight off. Which is up and down in the heat. The hard, the hard way. The hard way. Yeah, I go with Todd. You should come. You go with who? Todd. Oh, Toddy. 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 I thought you said Ty, like Ty Burrell. I'm like, what the fuck? He's in town? <laughs> you guys hike all the time? Oh. Um, Talk about him. Talk about Ty? There, he's the he's so single funny. nicest human being that ever lived and always makes me feel a little bit shitty because like I'll be blah, 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 and then he will just quietly say one simple thing. And I'm like, that's what I should have done. He's just oh, he's like a smart knows. and thoughtful and real. And when he's not here, he's in Utah fishing. Really? Yeah. He's fishing and hiking and he likes to go camping and I bought a piece of land with nothing on it so he can just go camp there. You know, like, he's cool. When do you know that Modern Family is a hit? Like, when did you... It, you did the pilot and it got greenlit right away? Is that what happened? I did the pilot in March, and then I, it got greenlit the day I had the twins, May 7th, because I was, the, my, I was in labor, hanging huh. out with two babies in me, waiting so for them fast. to come out, and my phone rang, and I was between contractions... And so I answered. It was Steve Levitan. And he's like, hey, Julie, where are you? I was like, what's going on? And he said, I just want to tell you the show got picked up. I go, that's great. And he's like, wait, where did you say you were? I said, I'm in the hospital. I'm, about, I'm having the babies. He goes, why are you on the phone? I said, well, nothing's happening. <laughs> and then I had like, it was, t- it was go time. So they, I had all these babies and I had to go back to work. And everyone's like, oh, is your life so different? I'm like, my life is different because I have three children. Yeah. Like, what's crazier? Uh, people asking for your autograph at the grocery store or having to deal with three children 24 hours a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All two, two and down. I had three children, it's, two and under. But isn't it great? Isn't it, it, there's something good about it, which is like, there's nothing else that matters. No, there's nothing else that matters. So you're like, okay, right. this is all I have to do. My mother said that to me. She's like, this is all you have to do. This is the only thing that matters. Everything else, right. everything else can go... Absolutely. Everything else doesn't matter. And that is great. And so I don't think that the, uh, the reality of like, oh, wow, now I'm really well known. I was like, I don't care. Like in, in times it was uh, a pain in the ass. Yeah. So we go to Disneyland and that's yeah. the worst. I mean, God bless Disneyland. The kids want to go. You want to go. You're there. And they're melting down because they haven't eaten and they haven't gone to the bathroom and they need to do both things, but they're too excited about getting on the fucking jungle cruise or whatever. And because they're little and they're tantruming out and I can't do what I want to do, which is pick them up, sling them over my shoulder and march them to the bathroom yeah, yeah, yeah. because everyone is filming this. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm with my sister who goes, you're just going to let this shit fly. And I was like, I can't, if I pick them up, it's going to be in yeah. some fucking tabloid tomorrow. Yeah. And there's look at all the phones. She goes, well, they don't know me. And so she picked up two kids and marched into the bathroom. I met her there. And then in the bathroom, we were like, you will pee. You will poo. <laughs> you will eat. Um, but yeah, that was, it was a, it was a drag. Some of that was took away from my experience of yeah. being a mom. But for the most part, uh, that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, all that yeah, matters. Yeah. So, like, being famous always felt like something you had to... It felt like a ball that you had to hold up. <laughs> uh-huh. You're not getting this. Uh, I'm, I'm not, talking about your dick. Oh, my dick. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate did, when I don't get the joke. It felt like a... It did. It feels like a, like, yeah. uh, I have to I have to maintain this. And yeah. I was like, I don't want to have to maintain that. Guys, quick reminder that you can get early access to all the podcasts and all my vlogs, exclusive vlogs, on my website, thenashnation.com. Right there, yes, thenashnation.com. Go to the link in the description right now and sign up today, and you will not be disappointed. Okay, back to the video. Oh, my God, he's yawning. He, what? You're yawning. <laughs> I'm laughing. He yawned. He was like this. He's like, I'm not I'm yawning. Gonna, I'm just going to laugh. Yawn. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you're yawning. That's pretty good. You're like, you can yawn while laughing. No, I'm not yawning. I'm <laughs> wide awake. I had like six coffees. Oh, well, I gave up coffee three weeks ago. And I, I never want to be the person. Oh, that I hate when that. people say I gave up coffee. I get so mad. No, I only gave it's it up. So, it's the most superior thing to say. Hang on. I only gave it up because I wanted to work again. I was drinking. I would get up in the morning and drink like 
a pot of coffee that you could put a spoon in and it would stand up so strong. Friends would come over. I had a, my cousin was there and he went to play golf and he was like, Julie, I was fucking shaking. I couldn't <laughs> hold the goddamn club. Yeah. What is wrong with you? And I was like, oh, maybe something is wrong. Like if I have to drink that and then, I only drink coffee in the morning and then at night I couldn't sleep. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, fuck. Uh, I love coffee. So I love it too. I, I'm you, quitting it so I can go back to just having like, Normal coffee. Good. How long do you have? Another month? I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of, I'm doing the, all these like mushroom teas and stuff now. How's that? I've seen that advertised. Yeah. Is it good? It, it tastes like ass. <laughs> it did. It, it, it may, I, I'm not much of an ass eater, but I'm going to say that <laughs> if a mushroom had an ass, this is have what. Have you ever eaten ass? <laughs> no, I don't think I. No. I, mean, I've, I haven't either. I don't think I've eaten I've never that. had butt I sex. don't really know what that is. I don't understand. What but, does it but, mean when you eat ass? You put your mouth in someone's ass and you move your tongue around. <laughs> Oh, really? I mean, that's what we're talking about, right? I don't really know because I, I, I'm like, not interested in the butt at all. I've butt, never been I, interested. It, the butt is just, it's, it's, all, it's an exit why, for me. Why are people, because then I, my, my ex-wife had a friend and she mm -hmm. used to come over all the time and she was single and she would say, well, after 30, it's all about the butt. And she would say this a lot. And I never understood, <laughs> I guess that's where people can orgasm better is in the butt. I you think a person with a penis can have a better orgasm because the the butt is tight she and the vagina the, is loose. She meant the woman. She was talking about the woman. Uh, but I think I feel it goes both ways. I, I go both ways. What? Again? Um, no, but I, I think she was talking about the woman. But yeah, the butt, isn't, butt doesn't interest me. I'm glad we were on the same page mm. about that. I like the mushrooms, though. Good. Have you watched all those documentaries and read all those books about, like, I saw you say that you did acid and it made you hate sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that made me, I loved you for that. Um, but I read all those books, oh, like shit. How to Change Your Mind, and I watched the documentary about mushrooms, and like Maybe. I do think that they are like they are the, going to heal us all. We just all need to eat a lot of mushrooms. Have you had any mushroom chocolate lately? I've had some. I had some over uh, COVID. Oh, you mean like psilocybin? Yeah. I, you know what? I'm old school. I think I went to college at a time when it was like caps and stems. Yes. And someone has given me some mushroom chocolate. I'm like. Is this like why is it chocolate? Yeah, it, like I want the nasty taste. I want it stuck in my teeth. How much is it? Is it strong? Is it not? I'm not. I I I'm very much looking forward to a time, and I hope it's in the not so distant future when I can feel safe enough that I know my kids. I'm really worried that if I do a bunch of psilocybin, I will freak out about my children. Get a call from them. At the, uh, at the, or that I'll be like, oh my god, uh, like running down the street, like that something will because this. I care so much about them. I'm yeah. worried I wouldn't be able to like see God like you're supposed to, or just you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you wouldn't know. I I know because I've done them a lot, so I know what it does to me. Uh -huh. I can literally go to work and be fine. Well, you like microdose? Uh, no, I don't microdose, but I just do a little bit. I know I know what the the amount is and and uh, from a piece of chocolate. Yeah, from a piece of chocolate. This is not a science. The FDA is not. It's like the shishito pepper of you know when you. You eat the Shito peppers and they're all mild and then there's one that's hot. Like you get this bar of mushroom chocolate and you're like, I can eat this corner. And it's, and the next thing you know, you can't speak. I think they have it science down. I think it's one swear per trip. How? You know what? I mean, how? I, I understand what you're saying. You're saying when they actually space it out and they I'm saying like proportion like it, stirring, and stir they're it. Like, they're like, is everything First broke? of all, these mushrooms are like, well, I guess they, they, they must turn them into a tincture first. Yes. That's what they must do. But again, that's a little bit like when I'm drinking almond milk and I'm like, how do they milk an almond? Like there's nothing in there. The dry little fucking nut. So what are they doing? And they take the tincture of dried up mushroom, yes. which is just dust. Yeah. And then, or maybe they pulverize it. That maybe that's what they do. They grate it so it's so fine, and then they mix it in the batter. But still, I don't know. I don't trust. I just caps and stems. Old I made school. weed brownies once, and I didn't know what I was doing, and everybody got really mad at me. Have you ever heard a weed brownie story that turned out okay? No, I know. I know. Everybody's like, I made weed brownies, and this one corner had two months shed. My dad was reading the newspaper upside down. Like <laughs> everybody has the story where the weed brownies went wrong. No one has a weed brownie story that ends up good. Yeah. It's 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 nice to be at this age, isn't it? I like it because oh, I like that my kids know I'm okay and that I can I can talk frankly because there was a while when I was like I don't want to talk about 
drug experiences and freak my kids out and that then yeah. oh my mom's a party hounder. I mean they know that I'm not that person at all yeah. and um and in fact they're stopping me from having a psychedelic experience that might heal me <laughs> <laughs> would you do ayahuasca the throwing up is my bar to entry there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I don't like have you done it no I'm too scared what are you scared of uh pooping in front of people <laughs> I don't think. you have to wear a diaper you Okay. You do. <laughs> like my friends wanted to go. To like where? To like, to, was it like a shaman in Malibu or like down into like Peru? Well, our mutual friend went. I see. And um, so yeah, down, no, not in Malibu, but like go to South America. And, um, and, you had to, and, and the friend had to wear a diaper? I've never heard that. He didn't, but people do wear diapers. And I just don't know. I don't mind shit. I don't care about shitting. Everybody shits. It's. Throwing up. Yeah. I hate throwing up so much. You'd rather shit in front of somebody than throw up. Shitting, <laughs> like, shitting is a relief, right? Have you ever have you ever pooped and felt worse? No. no. You feel great. <laughs> no one's ever pooped and felt worse. Throwing up, though, I can throw up for 24 hours and dry heave and throw up. And that is the thing that I don't like. Yeah. And, I don't, and they're like, and then they, oh, and also the one thing you cannot do uh, for like six weeks at a time, Prozac. SSRIs. Oh. And I'm like, ooh, they saved my life. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know whether I'm willing to go fully insane for six weeks uh-huh. uh, just so I can throw up and yeah. wear a diaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never heard that. I thought I knew a lot about ayahuasca. I did not know this. Plus, you'd go, too, and everyone would know you. Yeah. I think so. No. No, you'd be shocked. Like... I have the kind of um, recognition that is uh, always intermittent and therefore always, it's like uh, always shocking. Yeah. Because it's not every day, all day, and it's not never. So it's always like, oh, God, oh, like <laughs> I can be like checking in somewhere at a hotel and they're like, Bowman? And I'm like, Bowen? Brown? <laughs> Bowen? And then the person next to them will be like, have a meltdown and take my picture. And I'm like, yeah. it's always a disconnect. It's just like random. That. Yeah, it's just random. You have worked with Adam Sandler, who is uh, just everybody's favorite. Yeah. And, uh, like, did you get to, I guess you didn't get to do one of his, like, Hawaii things. That, was, that would be my dream. The Hawaii movies. Those, yeah. like, Hawaii movies that he does that yeah. are, like, grown-ups. They're all together I know. in the, I, New I England. I gave him shit for that. Cause I did Happy Gilmore with him, which was his second movie. I never thought it was going to, I was like, He's funny, and I was sure. brand new. Nobody thought Happy Gilmore would do what it did. This thing that lives yeah. forever. Yeah. And then I worked with him again, doing like a crazy Halloween movie a few years ago. And who be, be Halloween? Who be Halloween? Yeah. And it's his great. I watched it. His character in that is like you know, and he had just done or would have just been released on Netflix had been the movie he did with Jennifer Aniston, where he has like a mustache and he's trim, he's wearing a tuxedo, and they're on a fucking yacht in yes Europe, and I was like. Jen Aniston gets a tuxedo on a yacht and I get you <laughs> in bike, sh- like uh, uh, basketball shorts, yeah. riding a bike going, <laughs> but I love him. I really, of course he's, yeah. and he's a really decent, decent, decent person. And, um, I'm, I'm a big fan. He I, includes his family and everything. Like he's made that work. Yeah. His, his wife acts and stuff. And, and like the kids are there the kids and are like there. it's the circus, the whole show, but no, I never got invited. Don't I, I, I don't, I don't really know quite how he does it. Cause he's so, so normal, but I think that's also part of it too, because he acts so normal that everybody just doesn't react. Well, I think he surrounds himself too with people. Like he has been working with the same writer. I got on the set of Hubie Halloween 25 yes. years after happy Gilmore. And I'm like, Perry. <laughs> yeah. Howard? Like, yeah. I knew it was the same, not the whole same crew, but a lot of the same players. And you go, oh, this is his normal. It's all normalized. He travels like, it's like a circus, but it's a circus of loving people. It's his wife and his kids. And then there's like friends. And then all, all of them come along. In the summer, they all bring their kids. Yeah. They said, why did you bring your kids? And I was like, I didn't. Why would I bring my kids? <laughs> and they're like, because we we'd send them off all day and they go surfing and they do this. I was like. I had no idea. Oh, damn. I had no idea. Where did you shoot Hoobie Halloween in New England? Um, in um, Salem. Massachusetts? Massachusetts? Yeah. Oh, my sister lives up there. Of course, because you're fancy people who go to um, uh, Martha's Vineyard. I didn't know that you were like a waspy fancy guy. One summer, we cobbled the money together, and someone had enough money to get a house, and so we all went. 
That's basically what happened. Oh, you just went one summer. You don't go year after year. No, 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 no. It's no, not no, generations. No, no, no. I know. Of... The story is, I just take the Martha's Vineyards part out of the story. Yeah, maybe. Do you ever do stand-up? No. Never? No. no. I can't tell a joke. That is my worst fear, standing up in front of people. Really? And then who are designed to hate you. You do stand-up. I did, yeah. I'm trying. You I'm, still do it? I can't. I, I'm supposed to go do it to, in order to, like, pay for, like, my life. But I can't think of any jokes. That that is where the money comes from, is it? I thought it all came well, you from can YouTube. Well, you can make a lot of money live. You know, you you can make a good. I bought my house. I did like one year. I did like uh, I did like thirty five dates, and I got enough money together to buy a house. Which and that was from the dates. So that was like you can make so much, which is nice. But and then you're like, that's it. You're like well, mic co- drop. COVID thirty five dates. Oh, COVID came. I was ready to go. So I was ready to go again. Talk about this. Why are you not going out there? I'm scared. Of what? I can't think of any jokes. What was like? What, what was the theme of your last? What was the overarching theme of your of the one that made it was? It was a real. It was like I would go out there. They would come because they knew me from YouTube. So I would do like 15 minutes on my kids, uh, a, a couple of stories, and I would oh I would do some jokes about like being the old guy in the group. There was definitely some YouTube stuff, and then what else would I do? I don't remember. Yeah, just like a bunch of stories. Oh, and I told us, I, I have like a bit about when we went to Las Vegas and we won $20,000 for my nanny. So I kind of told the story of behind the video. So the video that they saw, I'm, uh, like, I'm like, this is how it happened. And in the last, so you're telling me in the last five years, you've done nothing. No, this was... No, you haven't done anything worth talking about. Um... Yeah, I just don't, I just don't feel it. You know what I mean? I would never want to work up a set and have to go do it. And there's so much failing to get to the good thing. I know. And you have to be really resilient. And I like being old because I like, I know I'm, I've got, I know I've got some like stick to I've got some grit, but I'm not as resilient anymore. Me neither. I'm like, don't knock me down. <laughs> Like I got uh, here, okay? I get it. Like, don't knock me down. Just give me a fucking break. Yeah, that's how I. Feel I mean, I'm too. trying. I'm just trying. Mm-hmm. And do you read? Yeah. What do you like to read? I like. Oh, I'm like I'm such a nerd. I read everything. Are you? Yeah, I read everything. Um, I don't. Do you read? No. <laughs> no. Does Twitter count? As it came out of my mouth, I was just like, "Why am I asking?" 140 this? characters. I don't go on Twitter. You don't go on Twitter. I stare at the wall. Can you stare at the wall? It's good. Can you like meditate at the wall? Yeah, like, I'll stare at the wall for okay. a while. And that's that's what you do. I stare at. Um, I I turn the TV on and I turn the sound off. And, <laughs> and that's think, that's comforting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, when I go on airplanes, I don't listen to the movie. I just watch it, and, and you, I try to imagine what they're saying. Can you hold? Can that hold your attention? Do you have ADD? No. No, you don't. You can actually focus and do that. That's inc- that's actually incredible. I watched Licorice Pizza with no sound the first time. I feel like <laughs> I watched it with no sound because I didn't understand it. I felt so stupid. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, f- I feel like I need to ask people what this meant. But that was like COVID and no one saw it, was seeing it. So I just like, I'm going to pretend. Yeah. They opened a Licorice Pizza down in Studio City. Did you see that? Well, they that's a pop-up shop. Yeah, but it's a full-on record store. It's there. No, no, it, it switches. Oh. That place switches. Oh, uh, what was it before? Ah, uh, it was something else based on a different movie. It's a it's a funky space. Oh, okay. Are you still in Studio City? Yeah. And you made me drive over here? <laughs> Fucking dick. I would have just like gone to your house. Be like, oh no, we have to have a wall. <laughs> we tried to get this, that place. We needed more white people in one room. <laughs> there was only one way to do it. Paint them on we there. We don't know the ethnicity of these people, these cartoon characters. They are so fucking white. Well, and we don't know that. We have to have to ask the artist. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This is rapid fire. These are just rapid fire questions. Uh, okay. Are we, am I supposed to be answering them? No, I'll do everything. Just sit there. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? That's... <laughs> What's something you are obsessed with right now? Selling sunset. Last celebrity you texted. Oh, Nolan Gould. Don't know. Don't know who that is. My son on Modern Family. Oh, uh, that's embarrassing. That's okay. I didn't do any research. That's okay. Have the housewives approached you to be on? I know. I don't I know. I wouldn't know them. I don't know anything about the housewives. What's the most amount of money you've ever turned down? Oh, oh, like $700,000. For what? 
it was like a job that I didn't want to do because it would have taken me away from my kids. Go see like a prince, like go to a birthday party in like Saudi Arabia or something. No, no, it was like a job. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a regular gig, but it was out of town. Got it. So and you, I was like Vancouver. You got to go. And film. I was like, it was like across the country or something. And I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't, can't do, do it. it. Good for you. I mean, good for you. Not worth it. That's ultimately. what I said. I said I'm not going to go do stand up. I want to be with my kids, and now we're broke. And <laughs> you could go to stand up again. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to back to school night. I'm going to see your kids tonight. I'm going to be like, tell your dad to get the fuck on the road and make some green. <laughs> okay. Would you date Larry David? Yeah. Harry Styles or Justin Bieber? Harry. How did you find? Uh, how did you feel when you found out you were Jacob Elordi's celebrity crush? Oh my god! It was the best moment of my entire adult life. Better than when you had your kids, right? I mean, having kids hurts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jacob Elordi was just like a long, tall drink of water, saying magical words to me, and I was hosting Jimmy Kimmel for the first and only time, shitting myself with anxiety and nerves, yeah. and he served up that beautiful, soft. You're like, thank you, oh, that's so nice. thank you. So I was. Overjoyed. We saw him at Erwan, and I was asking Jess to go say hi to him, but she wouldn't. Something you hate that everyone else loves. The housewives, I think. I don't know, because I've never seen them, but everybody does love them. There's a lot of talk about them, and I'm sure they're great. The last lie you told. Um, oh, the last lie I told. Ugh. I tell so many lies. <laughs> I tell so many. It's always, I'm out of town. No. There's like I, I I have a beautiful, lovely assistant. At the end of every day, we sit down and she has to deal with all my emails because I cannot handle them. And I'd rather be with my kids. Yes. So at the end of the day, she's like, "Okay," and she'll be like, "Would you like to go to?" And I go, "I'm out of town." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. I'm out of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I think that. And then you see the person down at Bristol Farms. I, thank you so much. I'm out of town. Yeah. Always. Uh, do you uh, 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 team Dawson or team Pacey? Oh God. I'm team so Pacey. Hard. I was Pacey always when I was watching it. But Dawson won me over and be in Apartment 23. He did that show. Oh, yeah, he did that show. He, yeah. he was setting himself up, and I really liked him in that. But Pacey. He's good like that. He, yeah. He's like, he likes he's to make, funny make fun about of himself. himself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you were stranded on an island, uh, who from the Modern Family cast would you want to be with, want to be with you? Oh, Ty. First of all, he can make, he, could, he would probably be a like, MacGruber up like a canoe and has survival skills, and he's really nice. Do you have a Modern Family group chat? Yes. Jess, this one can't ask. That's terrible. What is it? <laughs> ask it. Jess, you don't ask somebody this. Do you wish you had a daughter? <laughs> yes. I totally wish I had a daughter. I got a female dog finally. I needed some estrogen around me somewhere. My kids say it all the time. Like, I wouldn't trade in any of my kids. Of course, yeah. But I would add a daughter. It is an, inter yeah. it is an interesting question. I'm glad we asked I it. would love... I'm glad. See, you just... You were no, right. Je Jess is wrong. really good. She. I'm from three girls oh, too. Oh, it's funny. And I don't have any. And I had no. And I had no idea how to deal with boys. People are like, oh, you're such a boy mom. But I mean, honestly, I think a daughter would be so interesting and fun and just different. Yeah, I have a daughter, and it's it's wild. It's how old is she? She's 13, and it's oh, it's I like you're talking to Jennifer you. Aniston every day. You're like, what? Like she has friends in like Agora Hills, Calabasas. Oh, and you get to drive all around. Van Nuys. Mm. And you live in, and where, where does your ex live? Uh, next to Doug. I've, like, oh, f she I kept the house? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they, There's gonna... something about that sentence. Oh, she kept the house. You know what I got in the divorce? Two chairs from Crate and Barrel. Did you sign a prenup? No. What's oh, wrong with you? I walked into the, went to the, went to the lawyer here, fancy lawyer on Sunset, and we walked in, and the guy goes, the guy goes, okay, well, where's your lawyer? And I go, I don't have a lawyer. And he goes, okay, well, what do you want? And I go, I don't want anything. And the guy, the, guy, the guy turns to the other guy and he goes, excuse us for a second. And then they walk out and they, they had like a conversation outside. And then they came back in. They were like, okay, so you don't want anything? And I was like, no, I don't want anything. And then uh, he, was like, he was like, okay. And then I went to sign the papers like, I don't know, nine months later, a year later. And then I walked into the guy's office and he turned to me and he goes, he goes that was the best thing you could have ever done. He goes, I've been doing this my entire life. He goes, I've been married four times. She's like, I've been through three divorces. He's like, it tears everybody up. It's my job. It's literally how I make my money. And he was like, and it's the best thing you could have ever done. So I was like, felt really vindicated. You and your two chairs just sat there feeling <laughs> so good. <laughs> I don't even have the chairs anymore. Uh.
Um, death row meal. What? Death row meal. What would you eat on, on death row? Uh, What's your a, last meal? Just meat on a stick and a rice. <laughs> I could, who good. could eat? Who could eat when they're dying the next day? Who could eat? That's the thing that they're like, you see that I went to this art exhibit in New York that was fantastic and it was nothing, what well, part of it was nothing but people's, um, the receipts from the death row, because they don't, they, they get, they get whatever they want. It's Popeyes or it's like from fast food, it could be Red Lobster, whatever. Yeah. And they have the receipts of death row last meals. Oh. And I could read those things for hours. They were just, you know, family sized, uh, you know, with all the fixings from El Pollo Loco and, Surf and turf from Red Lobster, and, and I'm like, that's really interesting. Who could eat any of that? You're dying the next day, and you're like, I just really want some surf and turf. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Bike or elliptical? Oh, bike. What do you do when you can't go to sleep? Listen to science podcasts. Name it. Which one? Oh boy, so many. Radio Lab. Oh, you are a real nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love Radio Lab. What do you learn on there? Tell me something you learn on there. Everything. Oh, my Lord. Have you ever noticed Rodney versus Death? Ooh. That is, Rodney versus Death is one episode of Radio Lab. I always tell people when, if you want to get into Radio Lab, it's about how. Sounds like a WWE match. It's about how rabies gets into your body. Oh. And it is so good. They tell it by the time it's done, you're like, oh, it's fascinating. I'm I'll never this. listen to it. I am a nerd. Thank God we're not married was not on the table. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so glad I dodged that bullet. I'm like, what? I have only talked to you like once in the pool. Come on. <laughs> no, we'd be good together. We'd be fine. I just, we'd, I need a lot of We'd be good time. together because I roll over easy. That's sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, maybe we wouldn't be good together because then I would end, end up resenting you. Did you end up resenting your wife? Um, I was completely wrong, but yes. <laughs> self-esteem what's why i have this podcast <laughs> your next husband needs to be successful or mama has all the cash uh, there's no next husband come on julie no, no 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 i'll set you up no no with who right now fine rapid fire tell me who you'd set me up with go it better had me anybody who's mike 20. sheffer who mike sheffer who's mike sheffer mike sheffer oh you don't know him but um do i do you Who's know single? She doesn't. Would you date somebody like who in wasn't their 30s? single? <laughs> <laughs> no, people in their people in their thirties want to have kids, and that's where I, I'm. Guys out. don't. I'm out. Oh, they don't. <laughs> Guys are like, hey, you don't want kids? Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't. Let want the kids. party continue. I don't want. I don't want kids. No, I. I mean, I love my kids. I don't want. I'm not. There's no more kids that are happening. Yeah. No. I might have more. <laughs> you didn't get a vasectomy. Not yet. Okay. Get a vasectomy, but before you do it, jerk off in a cup and then give it, you freeze it. Not you. This is, this blows my mind when people get a vasectomy. My husband, my ex-husband had a vasectomy. And, but before you do, you know, you. You freeze everything. You freeze it because it's cheap. It's easy to thaw. It lives forever. And you never know when your wife or whatever, someone's getting hit by a bus, you want to know the kid. People get vasectomies, they're like, oh, it's reversible. I'm like, you didn't jerk. You you jerk off every day, just save some. Yes, yes. That's all I'm saying. And, and, when you, and when you get the vasectomy, does, I'm so sorry, does nothing come out? Does it, does it like dust? Do you not smoke? know the way that you smoke? Smoke. Like a vape pen? It's like a vape pen. No, do you not understand the way your body works? I, the, 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 there, you uh, have the a dish. vase, you have a vase deference yeah. that brings, that is the- oh, I love that you're so smart and into and science. It, it's and really it takes fun. The, 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 vase it, the sperm and then it combines it. There's fluid, seminal fluid. You still have the fluid. You just don't have the sperm in the fluid. So the fluid does come out. There's fluid. That's what I hear. Yeah, because I mean, I'm really into that. No, you, don't want, you don't want to, you don't want to be like, like dragon puff, like- and then if you have sex with somebody really old like me who has like tumbleweed in there, it might be because of fire. <laughs> like a little ashen puff. Yeah, you don't want that. Tumbleweed and then <laughs> that'd be very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta, be, gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it. That's all we have for okay. those. Julie, this is just what people, 
They Google about you. Oh shit. Oh shit. Wait, what is so this? It? Is the, this is the most search. This is the searches. What, what is Julie Bowen? What is Julie Bowen? Should I hold it? Maybe it's better if I hold it. Yeah. Let me hold it. I don't understand. So this is an algorithm. These are the things that come up the most. Yeah. These are what come up the most. What is what is Julie Bowen? By the way, who Google's what is Julie Bowen? Who is? But okay, what is Julie Bowen? What is Julie Bowen doing right now? What are you going to take it off and tell me? I'm trying. What happens? You are bossy. Oh, doing. Doing now. Oh, I was right. What do you? I got it right. <laughs> I got the first one right. Is it a, is it a quiz? It's not a quiz. Oh, <laughs> I'm so good at editing. I wanted an A. <laughs> I got it. Oh my God. I've got the full, you know, for years I've seen you wandering around our neighborhood and I thought, what is she like? And today I got it. I got it all. <laughs> now you know. And if you ever see me in the wild, I'll be like, there's no way out. So we can't talk to each other right now. We need to like, it needs to be like passing in a car. Yeah. And then I can talk. I won't say anything. Okay. I'll be in the pool when we talk. I that promise. So you can good. leave. It feels very safe. Okay, next one. What? Oh, yeah, what are you? We, we, we know what she's doing now, right? What is Julie Bowen? Oh, what is she doing now? I'm doing a, a podcast and I'm producing stuff. I just produced a movie. Fit, you want to plug it? No. Cut. It's gonna. It's on it's a Disney Plus movie. Not proud of uh, it. What is Julie Bowen eating? In nothing. What are you in? What am I in? I just did a, uh, oh, I just actually did kind of like a Scream movie. Oh, cool. Um, but I'm in it. I'm like... Uh, I can't say anything about it, though. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Got it. What? Wait, what happened to Julie Boyd? Oh, what ethnicity? <laughs> Why does they come? Spoiler. No, they, <laughs> it's white. It's white. Where is Julie Bowen living now? Where is she now? I bet it's where is she now. Like, you're it's like all yacht, over. You're like yacht, yacht Rock White. That's you. You're, you're very I'm, white. What oh, where it? am I from? Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Okay, uh, Julie Bowen paid per episode. <laughs> Ooh, well, we, 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 I Googled it, so I can say it. You don't have to, I don't want to embarrass you. Why don't you tell me what you found out? $220,000 per episode. That's 20 episodes a season. You do the show for eight years? That is an incorrect number. Okay. And it, it was, it, that's an incorrect number. We did it 24 episodes a year for a long time, and then we did 22 at the very, and, and then 20 for the very last year. But that number is not correct. Okay. Does Julie Bowen eat meat? No. Well, yes, Elizabeth. Um, uh, fucking, what's her name? Liz Banks. Who? Liz Banks. People always ask me for oh, her. Elizabeth. It, people think we look alike. You know who? who you look like? You look like the girl from um, The Boys. Oh, that that sweet little girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a compliment. Thank you. Who is Julie Bowen dating? Oh, <gasps> good one. No one. Nobody. Who is Julie Bowen in in love with? Oh, oh Aunt Gwen. <laughs> Does Julie Bowen eat ass? Speak Italian. Yes, I do. I speak Italian. Go. Go. How much cazzo stai dicendo? Ho passato un anno a Firenze. Ho studiato italiano. That's really good. Arte, Renascimento, todo. I'm getting turned on. Okay. What, what, wait, what, what's the question? I can't see it. What height? Oh, fuck. I, I think I'm five, six if I like really like mm. do this, but it's probably more like five, five and a half. Do you still run? I know you like to run. I do, but I'm, I'm, I have a lot of injuries. I switched to biking. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of biking and then I get hit by a truck. So, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I get hit by a truck. It's okay. Around I'm here? Talking. Around here? Uh, no, in um, over up in the hills. I was riding my bike in the hills. I got hit by a pickup I'm truck. So sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, a pickup broke, truck, not like an eighteen wheeler. No, I got hit by a pickup truck, but but like head on, and I broke a bunch of fingers. That's the worst that happened. I'm so lucky. Yeah. Okay. Good. What is this? Okay, this is the last one. Okay. Then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Oh, and then we'll wrap it up. What does that look like? Okay. Go go quick. Is this is this a this is, this is pickleball. Do you play pickleball? Yeah. Do you play it up? Uh, yeah. I just built a pickleball court. What? At my house. You just built a pickleball court? Do you want to... Um, have you over? Yeah. As long as you... There's an exit time. As long as we have like, come over from seven to nine. I'm really good. I, yeah. I am really aware. I have so aware. much social anxiety about people lay, like... Oh, I won't hang around at all. Okay. I'll literally come play and leave. I'll bring Todd. Good. Good, good. Oh, you know what? I'll bring I'll bring David. He's really good at pickleball, and he would he's trying to build a pickleball court in his house. Who's David? Never mind. 
Oh, you mean the yellow, Dubrov. Yeah, Dubrov. Is his name not Dubrov? Nina Dubrov. She, she's hot. David Dubiecki. Fuck it. Okay, I was really close, and I'm old, and my kids love him. Would your kids want to meet me? Would your kids want to meet him? Because he'll come to play pickleball. He loves pickleball. If he loves... I, this is what I want. I want him to come to make my kids think the pickleball is cool because my kids are like, Mom, you're a fucking loser. Why'd you build a pickleball court? And I'm like, because it's the wave of the future. It's so good. And it's, it's so fun. I love and, it. And I'm bad at it, but that's what I want. Okay, okay we'll work we'll that do out. It. Okay. We'll do it. Um, never have I ever been arrested. Never have I ever filmed a show while intoxicated. She, she's so good. Never have I ever joined the Mile High Club. Come on, Julie. There must have been some flight with the ex. No. No, many <laughs> people don't do that. Those bathrooms are tiny. No, no, no. I may have fooled around on an airplane, but I've never. We've never had somebody that's gone the whole way with I, I have am, never. Uh, this could be, tiny. guys, this could be the first time someone's gone. Like, all high up. get canceled for being boring. Yes, you will. She's a fucking doll. Boring. Yeah, Okay. Oh, it's got to go in the mic, but uh, by the way. Sorry. We're I on a, forgot. We're on a podcast. What? We're on a podcast. I, I forgot. It's audio. It's an audio format. We only there's three cameras and a, and a wall of white people. Never have I ever used your fame to get out of a speeding ticket. Oh, she's still. It didn't. They, they, it, I, I, okay. You know what? I tried. Yeah. It didn't work. It didn't work. That's so that's a split. I don't know what to say. I tried and I was just like, uh, maybe uh, you might know me from. And they were like, no. Uh, mm. uh, never have ever faked an injury to get out of something. Never have I ever gotten kicked out of a bar. Mm. Mm -mm. Never have I ever made out with someone twice my age. Oh, wait a second. Oh. <laughs> On camera? It was a long time ago. Oh. I was in my t t t 20s. Right on. So they were in their sexy late. Older, older man. Yeah, sexy older man. Nice. Never have I ever sent a dirty text to the wrong person. Oh. <sighs> I, I sort of have. Yeah. It was suggestive of something. It wasn't, that person had no idea what it meant. Uh -huh. The right. person had no idea what it meant. It was that like, received it. But they hey. were like, they, they were like, what does this mean? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't like. Hey, dirty. you want to get down to No, it wasn't like that. Like that. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, never have ever thought about running for president or office of any sort. Never. Who wants to be the president? You, you look like you could play uh, the congresswoman, though. I could play. I could play a congresswoman. Yeah, but no interest. But nobody wants to. Who wants that? Never have ever stolen something. Oh, I have. What'd you steal? Oh, I mean, in college, um, we used to steal from this poor, like, like 7-Eleven all the time. Just for shits and giggles. It was so awful because it wasn't funny. And I felt bad and I would go back later and, like, like overpay for things. Yeah. Because I felt so bad. I'm not, a good, I'm, not, really I'm not good at being amoral. A little, little weird cycle there. Yeah, I know. You could show up, up the next day. And, and I'm like, oh, here's $5 for this $1 object. I'm like, what? I'm like, bye. No, we owe you four. <laughs> bye. You keep it. You keep it. I won the lottery. Okay, last one. Never have I ever hooked up with a fan. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Uh, yeah. And that's all the time we have for Julie Bowen today. Um, so fun. So great to be here. Sorry we went out on that note. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Julie.